From Corolla One Studios in Glendale, California, this is The Adam Corolla Show. Adam's guest today, Rob Cordry. Plus, Jody Miller returns, and we'll do some news stories with Chris Loxamana. And now, eagerly watching the Supreme Court to know if his student loans will be forgiven, Adam Corolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get on a choice. We're going on mandate. Get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Rob Cordry in studio uh, and Skinny Jody Miller in studio oh, as well. Oh, Skinny Jody Miller. <laughs> well, there was a roller derby Hall of Famer from the 70s, a female named Skinny Minnie Miller. Oh, okay. That's a deep cut. That is. Yeah. Yeah. There Nobody's is a bodybuilder named Jody Miller who looks oddly like me. I think we've talked about it. I mean, really a lot like me, so I didn't know if you were saying Skinny Jody Miller because she is buff Jody Miller. Well, it now works on two levels. Like Skinny it. Minnie Miller cannot be with us anymore. She took what? a lot of abuse in that uh-huh. rink. <laughs> well, she was skinny, <laughs> Minnie. She was skinny she Minnie. <laughs> right, yeah. So um, with her gone, and we can see, Ben, if Skinny Minnie Miller she couldn't have lasted is long still enough. here. No. I mean, longer. muscular Millie. <laughs> but, yeah. Right. She's still yes. Or Tubby around. Tilly. Tubby yeah. Tilly right. Miller. They're she's all, deaf. She's fine. They're all in Sarasota right now, but <laughs> Skinny is in the ground. I'm exactly. just judging. Just based on what I know about yeah. women's roller derby, and I know a lot. I also feel like Skinny, <laughs> yeah, <obviously. laughs> like oh, yeah. skinny Mini Miller has very small boobs. I just is a very teeny weeny. Oh, yes, is that uh, her. There she is, Skinny, skinny Mini Miller. Well, she's not that skinny. Yeah. And if she's, she's a, lengthy. if she's still around, then she gets to keep the name. Oh, but I don't get it. But if she's gone, then it I'm... shall be bequeathed to you. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, uh. Mm-hmm. I'm thicker Jody Miller. Now there was some Jody crossover. She's dead? There was some crossover. I think so. I mean, there was some crossover between Rowdy Roddy Piper and Rowdy yes. R- Ronda Rousey. Yes, that's but right. But that was worked out. Uh, that totally was worked out. And now, out of the ring. It's terrible 100% choice. One hundred percent Rousey. To, to terrible choice. Rowdy Rousey. Uh, Ronda Rousey now has it one hundred percent because of the untimely death of Rowdy Roddy oh, Piper. Man. Uh, Rob Cordry. <laughs> Rowdy Rob Cordry. Rowdy Rob Cordry. <laughs> you get that name now. <laughs> we got Skinny Jody Miller and Rowdy Rob Cordry yeah. in in yeah. studio. I I think that works. I think you can take. I that. like it. What's yeah. your What's your nickname? Uh, uh, I I people will call me Ace on occasion. Yeah, you need something with an E at the Y. Did you give Rowdy, yourself that Skitty. nickname? No, I didn't give AC, myself the AC name Adam, Ace, S-E-E. but but the name Ace was more. A moniker given in defeat. Like I would come home after a date and they go, How'd it go? And I go, She threw the salad in my face. They go, Ace Corolla strikes again. <laughs> oh. Ace. Right. So every time I fuck something up, out came yeah. the Ace Corolla. See, without the context, you could do worse for a nickname. Oh, yeah, without yeah, the context. Yeah. That's right. So um, Rowdy Rob <laughs> yeah. has had himself a uh, very funny movie called The Donor Party. Which is in theaters and on demand coming up in uh, on March third, and uh, Skinny Minnie died in two thousand and eighteen. So do I get the name? Yeah, all right. Do I get the name? Skinny Jody. Rest in peace. Skinny. And uh, Jody semi recently adopted. So but I this, think this yeah. could be an interesting conversation. So this movie definitely hits home, and I haven't seen it, but I am watching it tonight because I just you know. Just, uh, just knowing about this, I, I tried to do what happens in this movie, not in a part. What? What well, Ma- Malin Ackerman's character? Yes, I, really? Yes, I mean. Do you know what happens in this movie? I know the <laughs> premise, I but I don't know. I all I know is that when I was trying to get pregnant, I was obviously going to a fertility doctor, but I was also sleeping with a dude. Sorry, Dad, you don't know this part. Uh, um, that uh, we were just he, having sex, and he was just going to walk away if I got pregnant. He was definitely. Oh, that's yeah. He was totally. That's down the real life it. version. Yes. I think I, of this. That, but yeah. I also was on tour, doing comedy. I went to Guantanamo Bay. I went to Afghanistan, and it was like whatever happens in Afghanistan, I take back to LA and raise. That was kind of like in my <laughs> mind. See, it's Afghanistan like it's her donor party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you know what I'm saying? I mean, and then eventually. 
things, you know, went a different way. And I adopted two How years ago. How about Guantanamo Bay? How about what goes on in Guantanamo yeah. Bay? Like you're talking to some shredded guard and you're like, I definitely, speaking I'm, of waterboarding, I, I'm pretty yeah, wet right I'm, now, <laughs> buddy. <laughs> that wasn't my opening line. My opening some line Some guy was, who can't even give you his name. <laughs> he doesn't <that's> right. exist. <laughs> <laughs> I actually slept with a 27-year-old male Navy nurse in Guantanamo Bay. So Good for you. Uh, and he knows who he is, so I don't have to say his <laughs> name. <laughs> and was the deal that if I get pregnant, that's um, I'm walking that's away? I actually, with that guy in Guantanamo Bay, in my mind, I was like, I'm ovulating. I'm not even going to tell him. Because he's in Guantanamo Bay. We weren't going to keep in touch. The other guy that lived in L.A., he was ready to just walk away. I was thinking, if I get pregnant, then I'll just, you know, I won't even probably tell him. Yeah, would you wrestle with that? Yeah. No. Maybe no. No, I no, don't. no. Maybe now that I'm a mom. Now that I'm a mom and we don't know who her birth father is now. Mm-hmm. There's no way to find out like it's a No. Oh, when you're pulling no. a train into Crete, you have no <laughs> and there's no possible way no. to ever identify. My uh, birth mom, this is exactly what she said when she was signing the paperwork. Uh, she's an addict. We have an open uh, adoption, so I know everything about her. I communicate with her. She said, because they have to make sure, do you know, is there any way you can get in touch with the birth father? Do you know at all, you know, who he, mm-hmm. he could be? She said, all I know is that I went to a bar, I met a guy, and I fucked him in the back seat of the car in the parking lot, dot, 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 as you do. That's what she said. Wow. And I thought, I remember college. I've been there. And yeah. that's how I knew that that was the baby for me. And <laughs> also, that's you don't need to know. No, we don't need to. You were that's like, thank you. Know. That's all the that's information it, and I'll I take need to my know. Baby. My yep. baby's two now. She's amazing. Great. And, yeah. Rob, do you have kids? I do. I have two kids, two, two, uh, 16 and 14. I got 16 year old twins, so oh. we can talk. Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Are they, um, are they, Taken after you? Are they interested in the things you're interested in? Well, you know, they're super funny. Oh, go! Oh, that's they're good. They're super funny, and they're they love to write, and they're good writers. Oh, good. Um, we sort of tr- we <laughs> when they were young said like we told them with 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 no prompting whatsoever that you're not gonna uh, we're not gonna you know you're not gonna be a child star or a child <laughs> actor or anything like that and then i think that just sort of instilled in them a sort of like they don't give a shit about acting or anything like that but they're very good mm-hmm. i've seen them in like you know camp videos of shows and i'm like oh wow yeah they're really good actors so who knows i mean it's really 16 and 14, it's sort of up in the air, you yeah. know, at this point. I, uh, uh, there's a couple things. Thank you for mentioning the age of your kids and then saying they're really funny because I'm they're 14, 16. You can be really funny. I'm so yeah. tired of the people. Like, she's so funny. She's 22 months old. Like, yeah. She's not that <laughs> fucking funny. And she's yeah. trying to be funny. I'll give her an eight-minute spot <laughs> at the Laugh Factory. Yeah. Let's see how long it takes before someone throws yeah. a piece of fruit at yeah. her. At the baby. <laughs> yeah. Get that unfunny baby off stage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but when you get in your teens, you, you can yeah. be funny. I, I was talking, I don't know what school your kids go to, but I, I had the talk with my 16-year-old son. By the way, there's the talk that the African-American family has to have with their 16-year-old yep. son. And then there's the rich yeah, white yeah. guy talk, which yes. is, yes. who's class clown? Yeah. <laughs> That's my, my, my talk of, like, who is the funniest person in your high school? Right. I was a class clown at North Hollywood High circa 1982. So I'm like, he's like, uh, they don't really have categories anymore. And I'm like, we what? had uh, we had best body and physique in the ninth <laughs> grade. That's we <laughs> we had class slut for fifteen year olds. Like we had, they literally called yeah. it class flirt. Uh, that's uh, right, class flirt. My God, think about it. Yes, yeah. best body. Oh my God, think most about what we likely did to, those kids. to commit a race crime. We, we, we had every category. Most hateful. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, we're not. They don't really do that. And I'm like. I don't know. It's a point of pride. It's kind of it's kind of cool. It's it's yeah. good if the person rises to com- comedic heights to be. He was the class clown. It's also good if he becomes a felon. You know, it's that it becomes ironically good, or he gets <laughs> accused of killing his wife or something. That guy's a class clown. And nothing funny about murder. Uh, my sixteen year old is where my kids are Jewish. My wife is Jewish, and you know, there every time. They can. I, I can't remember the specific joke, 
but they will they will they will stick in a really crazy Jewish joke. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, like a Holocaust joke? Yeah, like a Holocaust yeah, joke Jewish. or something I've always a Holocaust. in class. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> and never s- says that they're Jewish. Oh, you and got it. The rest yeah. of the kids are like, what the fuck? Right. <laughs> Holy shit. And they're like, yeah. So... <laughs> In, in this, this bit. the in the in the, the movie, Ackerman. Ackerman wants to get pregnant. Yeah, right. And is essentially doing what Jody did first leg. It's a little, yeah. it's a little more I mean, extreme than that. It's before the adoption. extreme. It's a terrible idea. <laughs> yeah. And all good movies are based on awful ideas. You mm-hmm. know, yeah. uh, this one included. She she has, she her friends uh, have the idea that that she's going to. Um, She's going to go to a party that happens to be my birthday party, and we don't really get along that well. And uh, and she's going to have sex with three guys. It's been all set up. They're perfect specimens. And, you know, what? You, who knows what's going to take? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's a – there's no semen in the movie, mm-hmm. I oh. should say, but it's all about semen. <laughs> mm did uh <laughs> speaking of banging semen go ahead <laughs> yeah. uh she, uh, Jody was at a uh, na- on a naval yeah, base. I, I, I know there was a lot of semen, a lot of of semen in my yeah. movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Jody, the the twenty seven year old uh, yeah. bit of all right who's here in California. He's not. No, I don't know. He doesn't live here. He oh, lives he in Guantanamo Bay. Yes, he was stationed there. Oh, that there. guy. But yes, the, the other guy. But yes. the other agreement yes. was with the guy here. Yes. Now he is now married and has a child of his own. I was going to say, now yes. that you've adopted, yes. are you like, well, fuck off? Well, actually. Actually, I was like, fuck off, you know, before that okay. when, you know, so this was a while ago. It was interesting at the time he was that guy in his 30s. I was like, well, I'm never getting married and I'm never having children. I'm like, OK, <laughs> that's definitely going to happen. Both of those things. But right now you think that. So that's why he was so eager to be like, it was funny, though, that I was like, will you just put it in a cup so I can take it? He's like, no, the deal is that we have to fuck. <laughs> <laughs> He's old school. Wow. And, well, you that's know, like, like the sort of porn version of, yeah. kind of it's is. my basketball. If I don't get yes. picked in this game, yeah. you guys don't have anything to play with. So. And looking that's back, crazy. I kind of was like, oh, I mean, we had already like hooked up a couple times. We had never had sex. So it wasn't like out of the realm of possibility. Sure, sure. sure. He wasn't a, just like a dude. That he I'm was like, a bachelor, was a, right? He was a total bachelor. In his defense, he may have only had one cup. I mean, a lot of guys You're right. I know, <laughs> like when I was a single. Guy just had yes, love. At his house, you know I've been I mean? to his apartment. And I didn't want to use his that's, one coffee yeah, cup. Yeah, that's yeah. a jack cup. He's yeah. right. negotiating. He's a good negotiator. He was very yeah. good. Yeah. He got me. I remember the first time it was very, very, very awkward. After that, it got easier. Mm-hmm. But the first time he came over was in the afternoon. I got inseminated by my doctor in the morning. He came over in the afternoon, and it was so weird and uncomfortable. Wait, you got inseminated. Sick. By my do- I was doing both at the same time. I was I went to my doctor uh-huh. and uh-huh. yeah, and you're ovulating. To- yes, I was ovulating. Uh-huh. And then we had sex and then we went out for lunch and it was very it just was weird. After that it got better. Mm-hmm. And then it just didn't work out yeah. and then I went on America's Got Talent so I stopped trying all of that stuff and then when I tried to do it again oh, it just, yeah. well you that's when you fucked Howie Mandel and then I got <laughs> pregnant with Howie Mandel's baby but we didn't want to you know what I mean We're what like, a no. chore to fuck Howie Mandel like how much Corral oh my god hole he, in this piece of visqueen plastic he laid over you can't be into it he, he can't, can't be. I, when I met Howie Mandel <laughs> in New York or during a comedy festival or something and I of course I mean it's famous is his his germophobia he's very yeah. open about it mm-hmm. and i was so excited to see him and he went hey rob and i walked up and i hand i, 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 I held out up. my hand yes. and he, i was like did he fist bump he fist bumped yeah. and i was like oh my i, I already blew it right <laughs> i should have yeah. known already i should have known yeah. i should have known i just was with him yesterday at funny you should ask oh um, really yes yeah 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 Love we taped that yesterday guy. yeah he is amazing and i We've been fortunate to have had sex with him with a sheet, two sheets in between and a hazmat suit uh, for the germs. But it, that didn't happen. Well, I was about to be best friends with him. And that didn't happen. <laughs> that didn't so. happen either. Yeah. God. Yeah. Close calls. <laughs> I, 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 I'll tell you my favorite Howie Mandel story, which will apply to almost any a person you know who's suffering from some mental illness, which is <laughs> <laughs> we, 
he showed up at uh, uh, Canyon Club. Canyon Club, and I was doing a show over there several years ago, and he was just in the neighborhood. They were eating across the street. Hey, so I think he saw your name on the marquee or saw something. Saw my name. Walked yeah. out of like a barbecue joint, saw my name on the marquee, and went, oh, I'm going to say hi. Ten minutes before the show. Walks up, walks uh, into the green room. Everyone's sitting around the green room, and he has a, a lid, looks like, uh, filled with popcorn that he got from the barbecue joint because for some reason yeah. they want you to carb load on the way out to the parking lot or something like here's some, yeah. here's the opposite of barbecue you know yeah, yeah. You think about like yeah. dried out stale you popcorn, try their popcorn in a barrel is the opposite of the sweet tangy yeah. rich fatty <laughs> big what is the opposite of a spare rib it is dry popcorn That's but it. for some reason they want to throw you out of the hot tub into the snowbank with your dry popcorn. But he's walking around, he's eating it, and then like at some point he he offers it up to the table. You know what I mean? Like, I want to wow. toss it. Oh. You want to hit off this, Chris? And then people are reaching Very in, and nice. thanks. And then I reach in, and I'm talking to him and stuff, and I go, oh, wait a minute. Yeah. You're, you're right. a germaphobe. Why are you, everyone's hitting off your popcorn. Popcorn, by the way, is a legitimate threat. You take it, you put your fingers in your mouth, threat. and then yeah, you put right. it right back into the same container, yeah, and it's yeah. always yeah, shared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Popcorn is universally shared. Uh, you don't yeah. watch yeah. a movie with your honey yeah, bunny yeah. and do that with mozzarella sticks. You do it, not the same one. No. No, 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 no. But you do that, you do that metal but, bowl of popcorn, you put it in between you, and you're just hitting off it, yeah. put your fingers in your mouth. So I, I look at him, I go, Howie, wait a minute. Spineless. I thought you were a germaphobe. Like, how yeah. does this comport with that? And he goes, Adam, you don't get it. I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, exactly. I was like, you all, that's right. See, I'm <laughs> taking my hilarious. sort of linear societal rules and applying them to so something funny. that doesn't make sense. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? And now we're like, why would the homeless guy hit that elderly woman with a machete? <laughs> it's like, because he's crazy. That's yeah. why. That's why. Yeah, he and would getting do it. back to the where this started, I, I have a friend who's like Howie Mandel, germaphobe, and and he it seems to all go out the window when he has sex. Mm. I would uh, imagine that it would. He's I, a dirty birdie, oh, <laughs> and like it and just goes mini? out the window, <laughs> and then afterwards, I'm sure he washes his hands, and then that's and then he's back to normal, his quote unquote normal, but like. Uh, I think, yeah, everybody, that's that's got to be kind of crazy, too. <laughs> I feel like yes. that might be the case for a lot of germaphobes, that when it comes to sex. It has that, to be, because yeah, it's, it's the dirtiest thing ever. Just kissing. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't we turned the page on kissing, like, now? What does that mean? I just mean. You don't mean, kiss anymore? Well, no. look, when I grew up, <laughs> when I grew up, porn consisted of just basic <laughs> straight sex now there's two girls in a cup and yeah all uh, kinds of stuff haven't we just this is a bygone era you know kissing like kissing you ever see any it's kids dumb. in your neighborhood with that hoop that giant hoop and a stick like running down the street <laughs> and hitting it? oh the one that goes back yeah. and forth like that oh that's what they used to do in 1914 you know to entertain themselves oh, yeah. or, mm -hmm. or kick the can like or something. blimps yeah what is the original when is the last time you saw a kid kick a can for entertainment yeah. All right. Well, there no. used to be a game called Kick the Can. I'm just saying maybe kissing is gone the direction kick the of Kick the Can. Like we're just so nobody okay. in this room kisses anyone. We've graduated straight to straight to finger bath. How do you start? <laughs> yeah. How do you finger start bending? anything then? You got yeah. You have to kiss at uh, least some it, cursory kisses, some like used, obligatory kisses. If yes. it's used as a primer for finger blasting, yes, sure. yes. Yeah. Then, all right. then Rob, you can I go right to the finger blast. I will. I will go along with that. Then I totally agree. On a on a separate <laughs> notion, but I'm I'm interested in sort of working this out verbally with you guys. Go ahead. I was talking to Chris. He was talking to uh, Penn Jillette's people. Penn Jillette was going to come out and join us at uh, Jimmy Kimmel's Comedy Club. That's in Vegas, right? Yes. That's uh, March 9th. Um, I guess we're doing kind of a matinee show. Well, we're doing. Well, we're doing. A, you're doing a live show, but we're also just going to tape a, po a podcast interview with him the next day. Uh, okay, yeah. so he's going to come out, right? He, yeah, and, not to the and, live show, but right. Uh, but oh yeah, <clears throat> it was explained that he's not a morning person. So he couldn't get there before 1230. Now, I then announced 
nobody's a morning person. <laughs> I, I'm not a morning. I don't know. I am forced to yes, get up. Not yeah, by yeah. choice. Not never by choice. I mean, when we right. finish a show in Baltimore and get back to the hotel at 1230 at night and then meet in the lobby at 615, yeah. it's not because I'm a morning person. You're conditioned. <laughs> You're conditioned to be a morning person. It's so. a certain fortitude. Yeah. You have to break yourself. There's no, you have teenagers. There's no teenage morning person. No. My no. kids will fucking sleep until noon and and will every day if the alarm didn't go off and right. force them into if people didn't start making phone calls and, and inquiring as to their whereabouts <laughs> they <laughs> would sleep until noon every day sure so right how many morning people are there really versus people who get a 6 a.m call time on the set for you know hair oh. and makeup or whatever it is like there are morning people. There are. They, first of but, all, they don't what, drink. What? They don't drink. Oh, they don't drink. They don't they drink. Don't people drink. That, yes, people yeah, that do not drink right. are morning people because yes. that's when they enjoy, you know what I mean? You ever see somebody that, like, I, this is, and I have a lot of friends that don't drink whether they're in recovery or not, but I think always that first year or second year, even if they're just taking a year off, they're always like, did you see the sunrise this right. morning? Oh, they just off. discovered yeah, the sunrise. You. It's. So, I'm like, I did because my daughter, who's two, who hasn't reached that stage where she's like, I'm forced to be a morning person. I'm up blurry eyed, yeah. but I don't want to be. But they're right. like, it feels so good to get. Are up these the and same moving. people who hold the coffee mug with two hands? Oh, oh they're so precious. <laughs> oh, this, this mug is so unwieldy. Oh, and they I call can't... it my coffee. Yeah, like I'm going to take my coffee. <laughs> this ceramic thing with a handle on it oh. and seven ounces of liquid would fly Fuck out of my man. hand if I didn't do a double fist. They're here. Oh, they're so precious looking at so the sun precious. with their double handed on. <laughs> the mug they're definitely scr like scrunched up on a chair just little tight there. smiles yeah. like yeah. Mm. 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 <laughs> so much better than you yeah i'm a morning person and, still sleeping yeah. and then they do the math you know what i mean they, they i get to jump on the day yes. and they're like i mean i get up at six i work out yeah, like, i i take care of business i answer emails you get up at noon like i get i don't do anything <laughs> when sure. i'm asleep except for drool but and fight off a They'd boner on occasion. They go to bed at eight thirty or nine thirty, yes, you know, them. and they're they're yes. asleep. So they're asleep here's probably. my here's my question for you: What percentage of Americans are actually morning people? Mm. And let's contrast that. You know, it's like, and then the same asshole or different assholes will go like, "I'm a dog guy. I love dogs. I, everyone loves everyone sure. who has a dog. Everyone loves their fucking dog. That's that's how right. it works. But there are some people who are legitimately not dog people. Yes, of course. What percentage of not dog people are there? What percentage of actual morning people could it be the same percentage? Hmm. Oh, is that's, it, oh, you that's there's a comparing, correlation between the two. I, I'm, I'm, I, I, I don't know. If there's a correlation. I just think it's the same statistical number. Like it's six point seven percent. Yeah, I don't, I'm not a dog person, or at least. I don't, maybe not in the way you're saying. I don't have a dog. Uh, if you see a dog, one, you don't want to pet it. Don't give a shit. See, now I you're admitting that, and I was just going to say, we can pull up a number, but I guarantee you there's a lot of people living in hiding that aren't dog people, and they don't want to say it because it's better to say you hate babies than it is to say <laughs> I hate a dog. Right. People yeah. will yeah. like dislike you more. So the fact that you I don't. can fall in love with a dog. Like, right. we found a dog, and we thought, oh, shit, this is our dog. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out it was from across the street. This kid had lost this it. Dog, yeah. But like, we had it for two days, and that dog loved me. Like, it just attached oh. to me. Mm. And and that I think that was it was kind of just you know selfish on my part. I was like, he loves me. Mm. I didn't love the dog so right. much. But like, uh, I also so I'm not a dog person. I guess in the way you're saying, but uh, I got up at nine this morning. Yeah, good for you. <laughs> you know, went to right. bed drunk at one tired. I went to bed. And I got up tired, tired. at yeah. nine o'clock. I tired. don't even. I, I don't even like getting up after ten and a half hours sleep. Oh, I'm I such know. not a morning person. I don't even you, like. You I don't like the concept of rising. No, you've got to get up at exactly the right time. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. you've got to pinpoint. And there's all these 
apps and bullshit to yes. like get I've got you it. there. I'm just to that. looking there. It doesn't work. It doesn't at all. The, uh, it makes me mad when I look at it. The uh, there's a study from 2016 that says 48 percent of women describe themselves as morning people, but that's hmm. that's a big con okay. Job. Let's just say half of those women are parents and they don't have a choice. They have a right. toddler like I do. Yeah. I don't want to. I my right. daughter wakes up every. Goddamn morning between 5.45 and 6.15. That girl, it doesn't matter what time she goes to bed. She will not sleep past that. Well, plus, if you hand somebody a document, a clipboard, and there's two boxes. You can check morning person right. or you can check lazy money grubbing <laughs> cunt. On the other one, Ooh. most people are well, going to go. you say that. You're going to force yeah, them that, into the morning that's person box. That's a great box. point. He, here's right. the thing, though. I don't understand why it has to be morning or, like, noon. I actually, before I had my daughter, I, I think 9, 9.30 is a good time to get up. And that's not morning morning. It, no, it's but not you're afternoon. a comedian, though. Yeah, I mean, that's, you're, not, yeah. that's still morning. But yes. It's not... It's it's not afternoon. It's yep. still morning, and it's not but early. But do you morning. have like a, a like a creative fire that sort of kicks in at ten o'clock at night? Because that's sometimes the sign of someone who's definitely not a. Well, writer. no, I mean that's... sometimes I do, and I I write before I go to bed. But usually I'm yeah, I write before I go to bed. But I do have that. That's what happens in the morning sometimes. If I wake up and I go to the bathroom and I think about one thing, that's it. I am. Because then my brain, is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you should write this screenplay. You should. Do yeah. It's like terrible ideas, probably. But my brain is like, yeah, you should do that. Should do that. <laughs> my my dad was a morning person, but he didn't drink or do anything. Like you know, the thing is, like if you have a job and you run like a karaoke bar or something, like you're not going to be a morning person. Yeah. He he no. had he was a more he didn't do anything past when the street lights came on. He was done <laughs> with everything. And I I worked Loveline Radio from ten to midnight for many years, and and that thus I would get home at about twelve thirty at night mm -hmm. every single night, and then I would pour a glass of wine, like watch Sports Center, go to bed at one thirty or two, and then my dad would want to meet up for breakfast, and he <laughs> would suggest that he come by at like seven fifteen, maybe seven thirty, no. and I'd be like. No, that's not that's not breakfast. I don't. I, I go to bed at <laughs> yeah. two, you know. And he'd be like, "All right, eight ten, you know." And I'd be like, "No, it's that's, in the middle. That's not. I will. I will do breakfast while you're doing lunch at eleven. <laughs> How you about just, that? You just reminded me that my dad. He he. He was in the army, and then right from the army, he went to a job where he had to get up at like four thirty every morning. We never saw him in the morning, and the weekends he he did it as well. And when we when I was a kid, and and now I asked him if he sleeps late. You know, he lives in the villages in Florida, and I figure that that's such a big party. Yeah, mm -hmm. you turn yeah. sixteen again, and um, and he was like, "No, I'm broken." Oh. <laughs> wow! Yeah, he he described it as being broken, broken. like like the the job and the army right. broke him. So it doesn't matter what time he goes to bed. He can't sleep. He can't, he can't, he can't sleep any later than but does maybe he nap? seven does he eight nap o'clock. During the oh, he'll yes. fucking fall asleep nap. anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Who uh, do we all hate? This person. Go ahead. Probably <laughs> the person yeah. that gleefully announces. They can't sleep past 5.45 in the morning. And then I immediately play devil's advocate. Like, what if you're up late, you're drinking, there's like a, you're at a bachelor right. party in Vegas, you don't get back to the hotel from the strip club. To, they always double down. They're like, 5.45, I'm up. And I'm like, I... I hate you and I love you. Like <laughs> yeah. I'm, I, I, I am envious. Like I wish sure. I was that person, right. but... Are you that person? Or are you just sticking with your story? There's no amount of uh, scenarios that'll get them to go. Oh, I'll sleep in if I yeah if I got to try yeah. cross a right. time zone and uh, taught a spin class or something. I will <laughs> sleep in. No, they just go. I just get up and then they use the word automatically. <laughs> no <laughs> automatically. Oh, yeah, I, I hate no that automatics for getting no. up. Yeah, the answer is yes. I hate that person. <laughs> good, good. Yeah. We all hate yeah, that yeah. person. All right, one last person in involving yeah. sleep. Go ahead. The person that suggests that in order you're lamenting something to this person, we've all been there. You do that thing where it's like, Ugh, I got a flight out of LAX at seven ten tomorrow morning. Ugh. It's going to take an hour to drive there. It's right. raining. I got to get there an hour early. I got to check a bag. 
I'm going to have to get up at 4.30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. And they go, oh, what time do you get home from work? And you go, about 6 in the evening. They go, you're going to have to go right to bed. (laughs) I go, yeah, I know. That's not, that'll never work. No, just go to bed when you get home. Then you'll get 11 hours. It's like. Yeah, but I can't go to bed at 6.30 in the evening, a fuckwad. <laughs> like, well, you got to go to bed. You yeah. just go to bed at 8 then. It's like, no, it's impossible to no, go to bed at, at 8. That's not going to happen. What's no. going to happen is I'm going to have anxiety about not going to bed, and it's going to keep me up an extra yes. hour and 40 minutes. Yes, absolutely. I'll go to bed at 1.15. Oh, I'll be packing, first yes. of all, and right. then remember that I, I you talk about anxiety, like in the shower, think about one thing. Yeah. I'd be like, oh, I forgot that one thing. <laughs> I got to go back down and put that in my bag. and. And then I'm and then I'm worried about yeah I got the anxi- anxiety about, about getting up. Worried about missing your flight if you wake up too late. If Rest. you, get, if you know, yes. if the Uber yes. doesn't come on time, your car isn't there. You're, you're like, oh my god, what happened? Like, I never really days. worry about missing a flight. I'm uh, like, I do. Kind oh of hoping god. for it most of the time. <laughs> you know. Oh well, gotta go back oh, home. Darn. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll take a, a quick break. We'll be back with more uh, rowdy Rob and skinny. I love that. Jody Miller. Right after this. As we celebrate 14 years of podcasting, here's another memorable moment from the Adam Carolla Show's Ace Awards archives. You know, man, I, I've listened to you for a long time, and I'm sort of getting burned out on you, man, because, you know, guys like me go out and make an honest living and, and do DJ work, which, you know, we're a talent, man. And I just listened to your podcast uh, with Drew, and you just bag on us, man. And it's like, what's your problem? I don't like it. Uh, I think it sucks. It's fucking annoying. If, if I could give you a playlist, we could we could work it out. I don't look at you guys as musicians or talents. Rick, you're, are you a party? Are you, are you a wedding DJ? Or are you like Paris like a, Hilton? Eat, like, can do what you do. Are you making beats? Are you like playing in the clubs? I mean, I mostly do club work. Like um, I'm work, been working Ugh. as a gig in Glendale it's for a while. Fucking horrible Glendale. music. No, it's not, man. I, I, it's not I even music. Think, uh, it's just a bunch of fucking robots fucking. <laughs> well, why are you being so hard on it, man? Because like, I hate you know, it. <laughs> why am I hard on ISIS? Yeah. I'll bet you, you couldn't even run my drum machine, man. Oh, challenge accepted. Yeah. How about this? I pay a fucking retarded monkey $4 an hour and he runs it. How about that, <laughs> bitch? Real funny. <laughs> Now for some new memorable moments. Let's get back to the Adam Carolla show. Well, you got to open those phone lines every that once in a while. That guy is wow. definitely a morning person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, the Donor Party is the name of the movie. Rob's uh, all up in that. And uh, yeah. also, what's going on with Top Gear America, by the way? You tell me, man. I don't know. Uh, we're, Motor Trend is still committed to doing it. Uh, we've did two seasons, and now we're. Uh, I think they want to do it somewhere else. They want to do it. They don't want to do it just on the Motor Trend Network, mm-hmm. you know, which is basically you can get in a hotel room. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so they're they're looking for money, and who knows how hard they're looking? I don't. I don't know what's going on. Well, that's but, a uh, fun show. It was so much fun, man. I had I had such a blast. I mean, I fe- I spent the first six episodes terrified, <laughs> you know, because I was like the guy, you know, D- Dax was the gearhead sort of uh, from Detroit, and and um, Jethro was the encyclopedia of automotives, and uh, and I was sort of like. The um, enthusiast, sort of mm-hmm. the voice of the audience, mm-hmm. love cars. Don't know what, can't describe what why an engine is called what it is, mm-hmm. and and and, uh, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it was so much fun. So I all that driving was really terrifying for me at first, but then became sort of liberating. Became so liberating. It became I almost needed it. Like yeah. I miss it. I I'm so mad because it's you know snowy up on the uh, the right. uh, oh Angeles the, Crest Angeles Crest you know because yeah. I go up there every once in a while and you know just feel like I felt yeah <laughs> what, <laughs> what, just feel what, like I what felt. is that what's that feeling what is that feeling? it's the two hands oh. on the mug 
Feeling. Oh, it it's is. A, it's it's a our feeling. version it's of our two minutes <laughs> on the mug. He's broken. Yeah, yeah. that's right. I'm broken. Uh, it, it's so good. Like when you've gone a hundred and what? How much? We we had this episode where we had to go at two hundred miles an hour. Oh we God. tried to go. Oof. We tried to go two hundred miles an hour. And I was in a Lamborghini Aventador SVJ, but we were in Montana where there's not a lot of air, mm-hmm. where you know it's pretty high up. So none of us were getting up there. <clears throat> Uh, except for Jethro, who did like 212 on a Bugatti. Uh, skinny Jody Miller needs to know that <laughs> when the air is thin, it's harder to produce horsepower. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. I know that it's harder to breathe. The uh, density of air. Yeah, it makes sense, better. yeah, when yeah. you think yeah, about yeah, it. it does, like, actually, yes. Yeah, that, that air is is as important as gasoline. Oh, wow. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to yeah. say it's a pump authoritatively <laughs> that's the engine is a, a pump essentially yeah. so were you on like a closed course we are on a closed course closed road it was pretty good um i got up to like 188 i think yeah oh, and so it, that feeling that feeling was yeah i don't remember it right. i don't remember it really and that's kind of what you're going for in life right, right? to have those moments where you're yes. like i don't remember i was so focused yeah, mm. uh, the last what, however minutes that I was uh, gone. Oh my god, that's like meditation almost. It's great. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> so what it is? Ten and two on the mug, by the way, with yeah, the hand. Ten, ten and two. <laughs> I go nine and three. Oh, okay. I'm nine and All three right, on so the more of a Eurocentric yeah. mug holding. <laughs> uh, so what it is is in in this day and age of being bombarded with information and everyone's got their face in their phone and you you can't go anywhere without seeing a crawl on a screen. I mean, it's it's not enough just to even sit and watch news anymore. There's three separate crawls going on that are telling you other news stories yep. while you're watching this news story. Every billboard is like electronic and it's on, everything's on the, there's, there's advertising, like every, anywhere they can shove it. For that moment when you're in the car, and you're trying to reach 200 miles an hour, it's the only moment where you're fully awake and think of nothing. You just, yep. there's nothing. If you get out of the car, Rob, what were you thinking about? Uh, it's nothing. 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 Uh, just going 200 miles yeah. an hour. And uh, you, not even sure if you're thinking about that. It's just, you cannot say what you're thinking about. And we can sort of think, you can think about stuff when you're having sex. You can right. think about yeah. stuff when you're getting screamed at. Like you can think about stuff when you're just driving your car around. Like you, you can multi think right. everything. All that I've been guests on TV shows where you're thinking about right. other stuff other, other than being the guest oh, on the yeah. Tonight Show or whatever. But for this little instance, you are not thinking about anything. You have to be focused to on be focused. this one thing. That's yeah. Yeah. Well, don't you think that that goes for anything that's an adrenaline junkie type of thing. I was wondering. Yeah. I was just going to say that. Because I did skydiving. Yeah. I, I went skydiving once in my 20s, and it was the most terrifying and exhilarating and almost for- forgettable experience, even though mm. I just remember being – we were hungover. We were in Vegas. We, they take us up 13,000 feet. It was tandem. There was a guy behind me. He was explaining stuff to me. But I was so out of it I was because it was so terrifying. Right. And I remember there's a part of my brain that's like, you don't have to do this. You don't have to actually jump out. But then the other part's like, well, you're already here. All right. You paid the money. <laughs> just do it. And if you die, you die. Right. Like, and I remember yeah. we got up to like you know the opening, and he's like, all right, I'm going to count to five. And of course, he didn't. He's like, one. And then we both go out. And I'm yeah. like, and you're falling so fast. You don't feel like you're falling. So you are suspended. And it doesn't look like you're falling It doesn't fast. look like you. It, I didn't actually so, get nervous yeah. until the shoot went up because then you're coming down and then all the terrible things, what if the shoot, whatever. But when you're free falling, I I was like just looking like I'm flying. <laughs> yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm flying. Same I'm flying. thing. I, I Look, but it's, you know, it's why. Well, first off, it's why people who stop drinking and stop doing hard drugs, start doing crazy shit on a motorcycle. Right, right. That's ah. like, that's number one. They're trying to like feel, feel. something. Mm. It, it's yeah. why people choke themselves while they're masturbating. Yeah. <laughs> At least, for, I, yeah, I can I speak for this one. Yeah, I can't speak for all, speak for all right. of the family of yes. autoerotics, <laughs> autoerotics who I share. But you hard drugs, choking yourself while you're masturbating, yes. like these are all ways to try to capture this this dragon but it can also be done like you can kind of halfway simulate it 
by just going out to the ocean yes. and dealing with waves. Oh, right. that'll exactly. get you. Yes. That'll get you on that wave. Right. You will not be thinking about deductions on your next tax form <laughs> when the, a seven foot wave is like yeah, moving your I, way. I don't fuck with that. You don't go in the <laughs> ocean. I don't, I don't fuck with that. There I, don't are, fuck, I don't fuck with the ocean, and it has nothing to do with. It has to do with, with the waves. It has yeah. to do with like they're controlled by planetary bodies. Mm-hmm. Fuck right. that. Yeah. yeah, those people are morning people. Now those people are the people yeah. that surf. They're really morning people. Oh yeah, yeah. The, yeah. those are morning people. And like, yeah, I don't even know how they do it because not only do they wake up early, they go into a freezing cold ocean. I I would Stupid. work with dudes so when I work. <laughs> I work at my first construction crew. I worked with a lot of guys who lived in Topanga, and if a swell rolled in, they would Shut surf down. before work. Oh, it's, that's nuts. That's crazy. On occasion, um, and on many occasions, just not coming to work at all. Yeah. But some dudes would go out at you know five thirty in the morning if mm-hmm. the swell was coming in, surf for an hour and a half, and then. <sighs> get their shit together and walk onto wow. the job site. Like Jesus. that That's fucking yeah. morning. Because it's not up to them when they do it. So they have to. They're ready. Yes. Yeah. yes they're I'm a little jealous of it, to I tell am. you the truth. I'm I jealous. Mean, motivation. I, and also it's so like stupid. But I just have, <laughs> I just get, can't shake the feeling that we're not supposed to be there. <laughs> <laughs> well, my, my, it, it's, 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 uh, it's kind of encoded early. Don't know why my, my daughter loves the ocean. My son will not go in the ocean. Oh, really? And seeing it's like 99% of the ocean is unexplored. So why yeah. would I get into that thing? Yeah. And I uh-huh. hate I hate the feeling of sand like on my feet and stuff. And then, Sucks. And, and then there are other people that are just, I'm not alive unless I'm, <laughs> yes. I got my feet in that, that ocean. Yeah. I, I don't, there's got to be some kind of DNA test or something for that. It is nothing to do with, you know, um, my dad was a, a merchant marine, and he died horrifically when a Japanese uh, sub <laughs> torpedoed him. It's just like I don't like the ocean. Yeah, it's yeah. not based on. Anything. I'm sure there is. You know what? They're probably. Do you get those? Do you do Twenty Three and Me? I, I, have, I did. Wait, didn't we do one for yeah, me? We, yeah, you've done it. What did I find out? I don't remember. I think we might have them on the computer, like your results. But oh yeah, yeah, um, yeah. They're 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 probably pretty great. But yeah. uh, you know, I get I get notifications every once in a yeah. while because the the better the technology gets, mm-hmm. the more they tell me things that I'm apt to do. Like, well, you're more apt to wink with your left eye. I think mm-hmm. that's very. Like, I mean, what? I know they'll be, but they will say stuff that I'm like, oh my god, I really am. Like they'll mm. say, like my sleeping, I'm a like a light. You're, you're more apt to being a light sleeper or having problems. Staying asleep. They yeah, say stuff, same. and I'm like, how do they know that? They also know that I probably have a my body, like, makeup is that I probably am have my strength in the lower half of my body, which is true. I was a gymnast, and I did a lot. Like, Skinny Jody Miller. Skinny Jody Miller. Yeah. <laughs> Watch your tumble. I wonder if Skinny yeah. Minnie made it to 75. She, God, looks, she looks like so. she had a hard life. I, <laughs> I mean, off the off the rink. I had a, uh, I hearkened back to a radio show host guy that I, still around, who I love very much, called Phil Hendry. Oh, yeah. And Phil would always, he pioneered this thing where he would play characters and, and host. And it was amazing. If you yeah. liked comedy, if you're kind amazing. of a student of comedy, you just loved it. And it, 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 was, it was sort of the same template. He... He'd play somebody, he'd uh, ex- he'd be a mother, he'd say, we live in a double-gated community, I'm very rich, I don't want my kids playing with poor kids, and inevitably some mother would call in and go, oh, my children are poor, and you think you're better, well, I'm better than you are because we have more money and stuff, and they would always get, yeah, they would yeah. go bananas, right, because it's, it's, it's real easy. But I was thinking about this time, this sort of intersectional time when we're going, well, we got to find a new secretary of transportation, but it'd be good if they were gay or good if they were black or if they're black and gay, maybe they could run Chicago. And then Lori Lightfoot (laughs) got bounced earlier, but she's like, this is because I'm black or because I'm gay. And it's this whole sort of identity stuff, like I'm gay or I'm black or I'm Hispanic or I'm a lesbian or like whatever it is. It's all kind of bubbled to the top now, and people are like, well, we kind of have to... We fired the one gay guy, but we have to replace him now with a gay guy. Otherwise, <laughs> it's, it's a gay position. Right. It's now become a gay... Yeah, <laughs> head of the FAA yeah. has now become... It's a, that is... A gay position. To be and, fair, that's been gay forever. Right. 
<laughs> and there's a black version of this and and so on and so forth. But I, I, and I've been sort of noodling on this for a while thinking, well, first off, it's the end of society. But secondly, <laughs> Phil so Henry cares? used to do a bit from 1998, I think is when I first heard. So 25 years ago, Phil Henry had this character we'd go, as a gay journalist, I blah, blah, blah. He would always just say, I'm gay, I'm a journalist, as a gay journalist. <laughs> and, as a gay man and a gay journalist. Right, and I, it, it seemed kind of like I kind of got what he was doing, but it wasn't really a thing in 1998. Right. Yeah. And I just told Chris, I don't know if my memory is failing me or not, but I swear this exists, and go find it, and I think we ran down like a 40-second clip of this. But again, this is 25, at least, this clip is 20 years old, but the character started like 25 years ago. If people who flag coach would just listen to me for one minute, all you people who flag coach, I'm a gay man, I'm a gay journalist, and I'll say this directly to your faces. You don't know what damage you do when you insist on coming up to the first class cabin and using the lavatory. You don't know what damage you do. Hours of work ruin. People try to concentrate. You really have no right. You have no right at all to be in first class. I don't care what the airline tells you. And because I'm a gay man and a gay journalist, let me tell you straight, you're not allowed up there, but the airline doesn't tell you that because they're bald-faced liars. All right, so he was so doing good. this intersection oh work early. Like, he kind of must have been on to something because yeah. this so guy good. was always a gay man and a gay journalist and anyone who tried to question him for horrible things he said, right. he would then shout them down because he was a gay man yeah. and a gay journalist. They're homophobes. <laughs> yeah. But his bit has nothing to do with yes, being a, a, gay a gay man or a gay yes. journalist. He's just really, he's just pissed off because he gets <laughs> to fly first class and he's Yes. Rejects are coming That being up. said, I agree with him wholeheartedly. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you, you have your own bathroom. <laughs> yes, you have your own bathroom. Please Does use it. Does it ruin your all. day when you see somebody from Coach slinking on in? I Well, okay. I <laughs> You know, people hate me, but I, I will say this. And, and it's the same thing we were getting into a couple of weeks ago when, I don't know, AMC or whatever movie chain was like, we're going to charge more money for the center seats and we'll charge less oh, money right. for the whatever. And then yeah. all the blowhard Hollywood guys were like, this is an outrage because poor people need entertainment. It's like, it's $2 more if you want to sit in the good one. Shut the fuck up. But I said, where else? This applies everywhere. This applies on airplanes, mm -hmm. coach and first right. class, and then even coach plus. Yes. And you, know, you, oh, you yeah. pay a little bit extra. And part of what, you're paying for is not just knee room. It's a bathroom. It's mm -hmm. a service. service it's food. being able to get on first or get off first. Mm -hmm. I like it, it's it's a myriad of, of things that add up to an extra nine hundred bucks. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a package. And so I said, well, what if you went to a, a ball game and you drop down twelve grand to get one of those suites? Mm -hmm. And the suite comes with food and a bathroom and stuff like that. Yeah. And then folks from the bleachers just came by. Like, why if I drop a deuce? You'd go, no, that's, that's unthinkable. Is it unthinkable that someone would walk in from the loge deck and take a shit in your <laughs> skybox and then, and then leave or get upset if you said, no, I don't. I don't want you coming in here and shit. And if the answer is yes, then the exact same thing applies the, in, in the airplane. Right. There's, you know, 12 people up in first class. There's 12 people in the skybox. You have God a damn. bathroom to share. There's a whole bunch of other people outside of the skybox. <laughs> they have a couple of bathrooms mm -hmm. that they can argue over. What is so <laughs> different about this concept? That is some tight logic. That is, That's right. Is <laughs> tight. Very good. I should have been on fucking speech and debate when oh I was in my North Hollywood God, High. You, you totally sh I can't believe you weren't. Because he was the clown. He was just I a clown. Was too busy. You were too busy just clowning clown. around? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was too busy entertaining. By the way, I would never Juggling. pay extra for the middle seats in a theater. 
I don't think they're the best seats. You think oh. they're the best seats? What do you like? I like Back? the aisle. I like an aisle. I have to pee I a like lot. An I like mm, an aisle. I, I want like access. An aisle. And mm-hmm. also, you never, I mean, you just got to be ready to go if something goes down in that theater. We don't You just want to be this ready day to and go. Age, you right. don't know. You oh, got to be close right. to it. Get out of there. I don't think about that. Oh, I, 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 it, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, I'm a mortal. I forgot. I uh, forgot. But, uh, but yeah, the the aisle is very important. It's very well, also you just too. have one. I just yes. like to have. I don't want somebody one next, uh, empty one. space yeah. next to me. Yep, me mm. too. I don't want to mm-hmm. be somebody's sandwiched. next to me over here, sure sitting, and mm-hmm. maybe our arms might touch. Yeah, it's uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Uh, but not over here. Right now, mm-hmm. not a, I have yeah. leaning room. You do whatever you want on that side. Yeah. In a theater, somebody inevitably kind of does the lean a little bit into your chair. You're like, get mm-hmm. off of that chair, or you both are like, that's yeah. my cup. Get your soda. Out. It's just, and I don't it's want... a movie theater. You're yeah. gonna see the same movie from well, the, the 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 couple front those rows, are, yeah. and, and you know that those those are bad news. But I would argue bad. that they should never even install the first row. Yeah, who's like if I've we've sat, decided you know, that little I cannot watch Avatar two from that. this seat, <laughs> it shouldn't be in your theater. Yeah. If this is missing a lot of revenue. Yeah, we're missing, I know. We're losing I, a lot of revenue. I get what they're doing, <laughs> but if, they probably agree. I'm sure yeah. they <laughs> I'm sure they do. All right. So uh what was that? Oh, that was Phil Henry. All right. I got another subject I wanted to get into here. Um um, I want to, I, I, I want to get a poll, Dawson. I want to get a, a poll here. Um, it's something I scream about a lot, but I've never really gotten a formal poll. Have we dis? Oh, we were discussing hash browns before this, right? Yes. Yeah. Does everyone <laughs> the, here? The fuck we, is we this got, going? We got a hash browns poll here. Is, hey, is everybody debate? here? How's it going with that hash browns <laughs> poll up there? <laughs> is 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 there is there anybody in this building that prefers cubed new potatoes or some version the breakfast potatoes uh, breakfast potatoes versus the hash oh, browns the that you kind of remember no. crispy on the outside yeah. a little milky Not on the this inside this small section of the building no. is there yeah, yeah, anybody yeah, yeah. no like there yes I do know someone I have a friend who actually gets them she gets the morning loaded, like, person she's a fucking no. oh, she hates she dogs gets the, loves she, morning. she loves dogs actually Holds she's not a morning person but she likes hands. these stupid <laughs> potatoes with the peppers and all that stuff no I want oh, a crispy gross. hash brown that resembles tater tots being smashed yeah. and then cooked again that's what I want it's Thank why you. I go yeah. out to breakfast yes it, the difference between making eggs at home mm-hmm. and going out are the hash browns. Mm-hmm. Wow. And That's why bacon. I go to breakfast. And if you live in a nice neighborhood, and it's like I'm in Malibu half the time. There's zero hash browns in Malibu, that's and the crime. reason there's zero hash browns in Malibu is because that's where all those shit kickers in Kentucky yeah. to go to the Waffle House. That's We're not right. say hash browns again. Hash, hash, browns. hash browns. Hash yeah. browns. Yeah. Hash browns. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's for the dumb people. That's where the flyover basic. country. That's those the guys wearing the MAGA hats. They yeah. they like that. We're we're yeah. Malibu. We yeah. got our own thing over here. Except for people don't like your own thing. No, as bring much as hash like- browns over to Malibu. Oh, you don't a hash brown. Big business opportunity. Adam's mm. hash brown place. My dad uh, used oh. to. Make- and it's spreading, by the way. We're <laughs> oh, it's fr- spreading. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, because uh, because this this um, culinistic d- debauchery. Jeez, this is a national issue. <laughs> it always starts on the coast. It starts in New York. It starts. You're and then and then they go, right. you want to be cool? Hey. Muncie, Indiana. You want to be like Malibu? <laughs> then start fucking up everyone's breakfast. Yeah, because that's how we do it. You're cutting that potato too many times. <laughs> <laughs> we're, in, we're in goddamn Timonium, right? Yeah, and <laughs> I'm just and I'm saying, to you, Chris, this is we're in Maryland. We're in a nothingville. This is nothing here. We got to get some goddamn hash browns. Yeah. This, if they have hash browns, they have them here. Mm-hmm. And he's he's checking online. So I went online. I called around. They got the you new. Didn't have hash browns. They got the new potatoes. No. Oh, yeah. oh, the breakfast fuck. potatoes. Off. Called it off. Scrubbed. No <laughs> yeah. breakfast. Can't find yeah. it. I haven't had breakfast my, since. My dad cooked really good potatoes, just cubed or cut up. But that, but I'd still prefer a hash brown. I mean, if he had a, if he gave me a choice, I would have chosen the hash brown. Mm-hmm. And don't get cute, Sorry, by the way. Brown. I don't want the form 
formed ones. Sometimes oh, I they'll do like love a form. It. You, you know, it's a tater tot. One? No. It, it's a version. That's a tater tot. It's a weaker and, version of what I want. But you know what? A tater tot is pretty damn good. A Did big, you? long tater tot? Come on. They have long ones? Well, that's what the, <laughs> the McDonald's ones, ones like are. The McDonald's yeah. ones. Big foot long. <laughs> <laughs> foot long tater. <laughs> it's fine. Just bring back the thing. It, we Everyone here 100% wants hash browns. I have they go a million to restaurants in North Hollywood that have tons of hash browns, so it hasn't reached us yet. That epidemic of new potatoes has It'll not... It'll start moving yeah. in like nutria But you got to get them extra Louisiana. crispy, too. you got to get it like, like really... Get that crust let's do it. some... Mm-hmm. Let's put some elbow grease into oh, cooking these things. Yeah. You know, because a lot of times they'll just be, uh, they'll phone that in. Yeah. yeah. You know, mm-hmm. Soggy. Get some soggy yeah. kind of uh, uncooked. Uncooked. That's what it is. Shredded yes. potato. That's just, it. Well, we're just <laughs> shredding it. You don't really have to cook there, it. Can... There, there is a problem when you do get the hash browns. Sometimes <laughs> the person you're eating with gets a frisbee of them. Like, yes, wow. Yeah, that's right. like bigger in my first apartment where the hash yeah. rounds and then you get the smaller version and you're like why do you have so many more of the things I love on your because they got a side <laughs> order they can't measure the hash rounds they're no. un- unruly they un- they're, uh, they, you can't handle a hash brown it's we true. don't know there's loose. no the tot you know, yes. you get eight tots. Eight tots. That's, That's why they it. started the tots the, and the patties. The brick, you know, the potato patty, you get two of those or whatever it is. It can all be weighed and measured. Not the hash browns. Like, you just got some guy behind the counter there, he, he behind the grill. He's just working. Yeah. He doesn't, he's One not tong. weighing them. He's not no. counting them. No. Nope. He doesn't. One tongue full. Right. Tong. Yep. It depends on how much you grab. One spatula. One yeah, one spatula, <laughs> one tong, and that's it. it that's your hash You browns. guys tell me if you agree with this. Go ahead. If it's egregious that the person you're eating with got way more hash browns, again, it's not going to happen with eggs. <laughs> yes. It's not going to happen with a Denver omelet. Right. You never go, oh, your Denver omelet is huge and mine's miniature. It's, it's all the same omelet. It's all the same. <laughs> Fruit cup, toast, all measurable. Yeah. But not the hash browns. Uh-huh. We could have a lot of inequity <laughs> sure. here. Is it, as I do, and I believe this is fair, I can claim some of your hash brown. <laughs> I can mm. even the score because of this atrocity. I would have no problem with that because I'm probably not going to eat all my hash browns. Right. I just want some of them because I'm a girl and we don't eat carbohydrates, mm-hmm. if everybody knows that. So mm. we eat a bite to say that we had some. So you can have some of my hash browns. Mm-hmm. I think I'd ask the <laughs> – first I'd start with the waiter and be mm-hmm. like, oh, what, what the, the fuck's up with my hash browns over here? <laughs> mm. Take a look at his hash browns. Mm. Well, Compare the waiter's those... going to go, oh, yeah, we gave – him, him too many. We got to take, take <laughs> oh, them back. We gave you. Oh, oh, oh no, no, you fuck uh, your friend uh, over. Uh, fuck your friend over. That's oh, right. Wow. Bring it over to another table. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Drop it on. <laughs> they didn't even order hash browns. And they that's just right. all of a sudden get the extra hash browns. You ordered a pina wow. colada, but I'm going to put some hash, hash browns, browns up in there. <laughs> I didn't see the risk there. Well, that's, oh. well I, you got to go to breakfast with me yeah. because we would hash this stuff out. Hash it out at the table. Well in advance. All right. Rob's got a hard out so we'll get hard out we'll get <laughs> hard out i love that i love hard, hard out outs. Is good. Is there... now i don't know so much like i actually like just bullshitting with right. you guys but like on a set or something a hard out a hard, out. Nice. hard out is gold it's yeah. gold can't have a yeah. soft out yeah, yeah. Nice hard and the out. thing about once you announce you have a hard out you don't so need to give a reason why. You don't no. need a note from your doctor. It's just a hard out. You have a hard out. By the way, when you say you have a hard out, especially on a set, it's amazing how you can get everything done in the time allotted to be done. It's no shit, right? When you don't have a hard out, then shit <laughs> yeah. happens. No, you're running yeah. late. But when someone's got a hard out, oh my yeah. God, we got through everything. It's yeah. like, oh, so you can do it, you motherfuckers. Yeah, <laughs> mm. yeah hard out. Yeah. Hard out. Yeah. It's awesome. I uh, nickname uh, attorney Mark Garagos, Mark Hard Out Garagos, because he, oh, he's always, I got a hard out. Because you just go, I got to be in court. I got to yeah. do a settlement thing. I got to get in front of the judge. Like, no one ever questions you right. what time, what's yeah. the name sure. of the judge or whatever. <laughs> hard out. And so maybe we combine it. Maybe we make it like rowdy. Rob, Cor- R- Rowdy, Rowdy, Rob, Hard Out, Cordry, or Rowdy, you're gonna have- Hard Out, Cordry. Maybe just drop. You're gonna the get Rob. sued by Garagos, though. Yeah, just have hard. Yeah, that's his. Rowdy hard. Uh, Rowdy. I don't want to get sued by a lawyer. Yeah, go <laughs> yeah. Rowdy. All right. 
Rowdy I'll Rob. I'll just stick with Rowdy. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the don. Oh, sorry, the donor. Sorry, that's the play on words. The donor party yes. in theaters and uh, on demand coming up on uh, March third, and uh, you can shoot Rob a tweet at Rob, and I'll spell your last name C O R D D R. Why? How about that? Thanks, Rob. Always good catching up with yeah, you, Yeah, man. It's my always friend. great. It's been a long time. I'm uh, I was happy to be here. We'll come back uh, anytime you have something to plug or just you want to hang out. I'd love to. Talk uh, hash browns. Just talk hash browns. <laughs> yeah. All right. Quick break. We'll I do feel some like we got a lot done. news with uh, Skinny Jody Miller right after this. <laughs> Blinds galore. Love these guys. Use these guys. They're having their friends and family sale. It starts this week. All custom blinds, shades, and shutters are 50% off. The first big sale of the year, go to blindsgalore.com today. Get 50% off before it ends. I use these guys. Drew uses these guys. They have ones that you can hook up to your smartphone. You plug them in, charge it. You don't have to wire it or anything. Just just charge it. Battery lasts a long time. 100% custom blind shades and drapes or shutters. Blackout. Cordless, motorized, smartphone capable. They've got it all. Just take the measurements and uh, you can customize it online. See exactly what your blind or shade will look like on screen before you buy. Everything's hand built from scratch, created your exact measurements, family owned and run. These guys have been doing it right for 25 plus years. So get the perfect fit and look. It is guaranteed. It's blinds galore, right, Dawson? Get over to BlindsGalore.com to order your free samples today and take 50% off everything during their huge friends and family sale. That's BlindsGalore.com and let them know Adam sent you. Hurry, sale ends March 7th. In celebration of Jim Carolla's upcoming 92nd birthday, here's a list of 92 things Jim Carolla has never done. Number 26 purchased a lift ticket just one of 92 things jim carolla has never done let's get back to the adam carolla show well we got news we got uh, skinny jody miller here yeah. so thin i'm so skinny as well and you can well you can find her well she works on funny you should ask and then you can find her on uh, the world's funniest weather you check your local listings for that and the uh, website JodyMillerComedy.com. Are you doing any dates coming up? You know, I do most of my dates in town. I'm going to be up in Napa in April. So mm-hmm. uh, April 1st, it's a like a you know a vineyard. I'll do my corporate stuff. I am uh, taping my special, though, this summer. So. Oh, you are? Yeah. So I'm going to be, uh, that's going to be at the Ice House. And uh, it's going to be in July. And I'm very excited. The Ice House has been, you know, completely renovated. It's amazing. And yeah, I'm excited about that. It's beautiful. Yeah. I was just there. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to go back. Um, I'm very excited about that. So I do most of my dates in town. I'm, you can find me. Check social media. I yeah. whore myself out all the time. Yeah, yeah. follow her on Instagram. She posts stand-up clips all the time on that. All my stand-up clips. Yeah. Does the Ice House, is it wired now so that you don't even need to bring in like a camera crew? We are we are bringing in a camera crew, but I'm we're, I'm going through like a walkthrough in a couple weeks and I'll, I'll find out. But the stage looks amazing, what they did. It looks amazing. I'm very excited. Uh it's beautiful. To, uh, to record it there. I'm happy to do it. He was either going to be here in New Jersey, because I'm from Jersey, but I have so many friends and fans that live here, so it's like, why not do it here? You know what I mean? Yeah, do it here. Yeah. That way my daughter can be... I'm just kidding. <laughs> She's a she'll nice. she'll open for you. We'll throw fruit in her. Seven months. Yeah, the ice house is like stay the art now. Yeah. It's beautiful. So Always you were a just great there. crowd. Yeah. I was just there less than a week ago. How long was it closed? A long time. All the way through the pandemic, and then they... I mean, it's been... I feel like it's been almost three, three I years. I feel like it's been three years, too. Yeah. It closed about the time I announced finally a club that's within 15 <laughs> minutes of my house. It was your fault. They promptly closed it, and that's what happened with the Ice House. But now it's back, and it's a, it's a good venue. The, uh, the Ice House is one of those clubs that it has such a reputation for, I mean, the best crowds. In fact, if you were auditioning to become a regular at the ice house they would accept any tape except one that was taped at their club because they know how giving their audience is mm-hmm. so you could 
you know, submit like, oh, here's me doing seven minutes and destroying. But if it was at their club, they're like, no, we need it yeah. from another club. That's what I heard. What makes them different, though? Like what? Because is- it's just enough outside of L.A. that they're not assholes. And <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> they're, I mean, they're not there to judge you. You know what I mean? I feel like because I started comedy in New York, but I still feel like L.A., if you can make an L.A. crowd laugh, you can make a crowd laugh anywhere, in my opinion. Don't you find that? There's so many like people in the industry that come to a- it's the only place I know that they can come to a comedy club with that like it's a little bit better now because people are just so thirsty for comedy and they're you know what I mean but a lot of times they're just like I could do that or I don't you know what I mean like there's a lot of people that go to comedy shows that you're like why they look like they've been forced Mm -hmm. to come to a comedy show but you go anywhere else in the country and those people are genuinely excited to see somebody on stage telling jokes yeah well I was just there uh, less than a week ago after you know not being there for three right. years yeah. and then everyone's like the ice house is the best audience ever and i was like all right and i i told it <laughs> i told it on the show but i said i'm just doing all new material then just stuff i've never done yeah. and uh but with the caveat that if the first one doesn't work out right. i'm going right back, right back to the tried and true stuff i it just everything killed and uh they never gave me the fucking light i i oh, wow. I, I got a half hour amazing i, I was like I was supposed to do 18 minutes and I, I was like at the half hour mark all new shit just roll, rolling along yeah it was crazy it was a half hour of new fucking comedy right. and it was killing and and I, but i was i kept looking at the light going shouldn't i be going and uh, they're like hey you're rolling so good we didn't give you the light and i was like but you got to tell me i just was gonna, now i was just gonna say that and clubs do that the first time i was ever at the la jolla comedy store i was featuring so i was supposed to do 30 minutes headliner was doing 45 mm-hmm. was my first time at the la jolla comedy store and i didn't know this but i'm on stage first show early show no light. What had happened is the headliner hadn't shown up yet, which is oh, fine. Oh, right. But I, and now I'm thinking, oh my God, I'm running the light. I don't know where the light is. I thought I knew where the light is. They're giving me the light. They're probably flashing me. Like I right. just kept talking and, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking about all the terror. And then finally, I just started wrapping up because I was like, I, it's me. I definitely fucked something up. I was on there for 42 minutes, something like that. And I just was like, okay. And then all of a sudden the light came on and I saw the light. And they're like, oh yeah, he wasn't here yet. I'm like, well, you have to tell me. You mm. have to find a way yeah. to either go keep it going or just uh, like, because I was... I yeah. was like, I'm never gonna get asked back. And this is like it out. this is like your thing with push and pull, Adam. You need you need you need now. You need a green light. Yeah, yeah. keep that oh, on. Yeah. Keep that on. If it if you gotta keep going, because you don't know what yeah if the if the headliners come on yet, and you don't want to introduce obviously not introduce the headliner. If, if also, it's... clubs more so now, but a few years ago, it was the only space in America that didn't possess a clock. Yes, and mm-hmm. I was like that, oh and, you know. Vegas casinos. But yeah. I was like, if there's okay. <laughs> here's 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 the here's how we're gonna work this out. There is a place, and the place says, look, the opener, first guy's gonna do five minutes, next guy's gonna do eight minutes, and then the other guy's gonna do fourteen and a half minutes, right. and then you come on and do forty five minutes. But we will not allow a clock <laughs> inside of this fucking room. So you have no like, idea. Yeah, we feel it out. Okay. That doesn't make sense, though. Like, every school classroom I was in yes. as a kid had a clock. Yes. But the rules for schools, you're going to show up at 810, you're going to rot here until 310, yeah. and then a bell's going to ring. A bell. We don't yeah. need a clock. It's not we even, have a bell. It's not even as exact as like eight or as like ten and five minutes. You could do eight minutes. They'll do seven minutes. It right. gets really. It gets crazy. And you, here's the thing: Flappers actually does in their main room have a clock. And I didn't. I never realized how much. It's I appreciate all recent. It place. Yes, it's, it is. You're it, right. It, it is recent, but it's good because sometimes I'm on stage. You're fucking with the audience. You're right. doing something. All of a sudden, you get the light. You're like, I didn't do any of the stuff I wanted to do. Now, if I'm looking at the clock and I'm like, shit, I'm already at twelve minutes. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop doing what I'm doing. I'm gonna get to some new stuff. It's, guys, you have to know. Cage fighters have a clock. <laughs> yeah. Guys who fight in underpants and attempt to kill other people in the, in this octagon in a cage you're in <laughs> have the benefit of a clock. They do yes. it all the time. Like, oh, the guy's got a double guillotine on him. And he's he's looking up at the clock. Yeah. He doesn't know he's gonna yes. make it outside this round. 
But not for the comedians who have been tasked with doing eight minutes, yes. nine minutes, and 177 seconds. Yes. No, no clock for you. Exactly. It yeah. wouldn't make sense to put a clock. Where would we put a clock? It's, <laughs> it's only 1,700 square feet in here. You're not going to be able to shoehorn a clock into this room. Like, just put the fucking clock just on the back wall. So we can see Please. it. Something. I, I can't remember where I was, Chris, but it was like, I do remember the first time I went into a comedy club. It was like 12 years ago, and there was a clock. clock. And I was like, this place has a clock. <laughs> the other people talk about time. <laughs> and it's a lot of like, hey, we're doing the first show, and we got we to gotta load in, so yep. don't go over. Don't go don't over. Go over. Well, how do I know what over is? Exactly. Because you will not provide a clock Because in they this room. say they're going to give you a light. And let me tell you something. Human error happens more oh, often sure. than not. And all of a sudden, they forget. I've been on stage so many times, and I'm like, I know I've done 15. I have a 15-minute spot, and I know it. And, I, and there's no way that you, And then I, I just get off. And then the, they come running over like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I totally I, I walked out for a second. I'm like, well, fuck you. Yeah, it's like the wake-up call, Because right? I've got, like, Tom Papa waiting yeah. to go on stage, and I'm cutting into his I'm like, you can't just also, do that. So you're in charge of a light <laughs> at a, at a nightclub. How consistent? Were you at the top of your class <laughs> at the Air Force Academy? Like, no. you're what an did, idiot. What you're, they, and you what smoke a lot voted? of weed. What did they get voted in high school? <laughs> the light keeper. Most likely to fuck something up. <laughs> <laughs> Most likely to fuck up a cue. Like, yes. <laughs> but if you're headlining, there's no light right, ever. No. But there is the instructions that there's a 930 show. We want to put, yes. blah, 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 blah. But just put a clock in there. Put a clock. That's all. Let I don't know. think. The Ice House has a clock because I would have seen the clock. Well, that'll be something when I'm doing my special. I Please. will have a clock put up yeah. because yeah. I need to know because I do have two shows and I want to know. I mean, obviously, my set will be timed out, you know, but you never know. People are laughing. You're holding for laughs. You are talking to someone in the audience. Something goes off the rails. You think of something and that happens. And you look and you're like, oh, my God, that's already been like whatever. Or the worst. This is the worst for me is when I'm up there and I'm headlining and for some reason, I'm just like, this feels like, and I'm looking down, I look at my phone now, and I'm like, oh, I've only been up here 20 minutes. Oh, well, the like, downside that, of the yeah. clock is I powered through 11 jokes. <laughs> like, I walked on stage, said 921, I'm supposed yeah. to do an hour. I went through 11 <laughs> oh jokes. God. It's not going that well. It's still, it's 927? Oh, yeah. my God. Like, it's just been six minutes? I happened to, I did a Valentine's Day show. I think you were on the show. We taped, funny you should ask. And after that long tape day, I had to go to uh, La Kenyatta Flint Ridge mm. and do a country club Valentine's Day show for just a whole bunch of couples. It was like my worst nightmare. I was just <laughs> in a room with people eating surf and turf, a pre-set menu. Mm -hmm. I, there's no stage. I'm on the dance floor. Mm. I'm talking to people. There were kids in the audience. Mm. So I was like, oh, God. I, you know, I was going to do 45 minutes. I blew through so much stuff on my adoption. I looked down. It was like 18 minutes. Yes. I was like, I wanted to be like, well, that's my time. Like, right. But I didn't. <laughs> I obviously just dug up old stuff. I started talking to people. But it was like, it was, oh. Yeah. I made it. I think I the made it. To, I think I made clock. it in like 42 yeah. minutes. I've so rethunk like, this done. whole clock you degree. You did, seriously. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Well, it's always in the fucking school. I, I get it, but you just don't need it there. They're on a bell system. True. Why <laughs> do right. they need Yeah, well we have we actually added a clock to your writer now. Whenever we go to clubs, there's a we need we ask every club oh, to have a do. clock. And then yeah. hopefully they keep the clock there. Oh uh, yeah. We're done and because then, why would they put it up and then take it down? Yeah. Now I'm like Johnny Apple clock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let's do some news. All right. Well let's um well if we're talking about uh comedy and comedy specials uh we, we kind of mentioned this yesterday with nate but yeah chris rock he is slated to do his live netflix special mm -hmm. march 4th i know jeff ross is opening up for him oh, oh yeah Je jeff was on the show yesterday we were talking about oh it. really yeah that's awesome yeah yeah so obviously it'll be unedited it's called selective outrage and it'll be the uh yeah this saturday 10 o'clock eastern that'll be great where's he doing it do we know baltimore i think yeah i, I know I actually don't know where. I, Baltimore? I, know shows, I think it's in like, Baltimore. Comedy oh, doing good this, luck like, getting hash browns. <laughs> <laughs> they have hash browns You have to there. mule that shit in. Not Timonian. <laughs> Timonian? Oh, yeah. yeah Baltimore's Hippodrome Theater. Oh. Wait. I think that's right. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, that'll be fun. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I. It, it's weird. Like Everyone was like, I want to hear what he has to say about the whole Will Smith thing. It's like, I saw all I needed to see. Like I get it. I get the part where you want to hear some jokes about it, mm -hmm. but 
there's no insights that he's no. going to have that I didn't see. No. But I'll, I'll be curious to hear it. And it's kind of cool doing a live show, right? Yeah, I, I don't I'm think sh- Netflix has ever streamed anything live. It's going to no. it's going to lead to more live shows. It I'm definitely guessing. will, and I think it should. I mean, yeah. yeah. And I the think timing is, is uh, convenient one week before the Oscars. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, also, uh, so John Stewart is in the news as well. Rob's mm. old friend. Rob credits a lot of his career to John Stewart mm. on the Daily Show. So John Stewart, uh, he remember when he's on Stephen Colbert, and he kind of when Stewart that. was on there. Yeah, yeah he was the, on Colbert. The, must have been a year, twenty twenty one, and a half ago now, or something. We'll yeah, try to figure out. And when he floated it was. the idea of uh, coronavirus or COVID being a leak from a lab in Wuhan. Right. And here's a little clip from that just to remind everybody. The disease is the same name as the lab. <laughs> that's just that's just a little too weird, don't you think? And then they I, ask I, those scientists, they're like, how did this... So wait a minute, you work at the Wuhan Respiratory Coronavirus Lab. How did this happen? And they're like, mm, a pangolin kissed a turtle. <laughs> yeah, so... So now that the uh, Department of Energy and all that new intelligence came out that it very much is a lab leak, um, yes. John Stewart has commented on it on his Apple TV show. So here's him. Here's what he had to say. The larger problem with all of this is the inability to discuss things that are within the realm of possibility without falling into absolutes and litmus testing each other for uh, our political allegiances as it arose from that. My, my bigger problem with, with that was, I thought it was a pretty good bit that expressed kind of how I felt. And the two things that came out of it were, I'm racist against Asian people, and how dare I align myself with the alt-right. Yeah, yeah. and this is John Stewart. I mean, I, he can do no harm with, I, I guess, anybody, really. I mean, everybody, his likability rating is off the charts. Well, okay. Let me tell you something. It's un, it's an untenable position because we're into a new world where it's like Trump wanted X, Y, and Z. Like Trump wanted to lower taxes. And then right. I go, I'd like to lower. Oh, so you're a Trump guy. It's like, yeah. this is a uh, Hitler liked ice cream. Do you <laughs> like ice cream? Yes, I oh. do. Fuck stick. I do. <laughs> okay, Nazi. Uh, am I allowed to be right about shit? Mm. I, I'm so, so here's the, here are the rules. If, if Trump thought it came from a lab in right. Wuhan, then we must say it came from a mammal right. in Wuhan. And if Trump said, open the schools, then you have to say, close the schools indefinitely. Mm-hmm. And if cr- Trump said, beaches and parks should be open, then we'll have to say, close the beaches and the parks. Right. And if he says, hydroxychloroquine may be good, we'll have to slap it out of everyone's hands. So these are the rules. So one guy comments on what he thinks mm-hmm. like i don't want small businesses shut down well now we must shut down small business what a way to go through life everybody uh, seriously so uh donald trump said i would never eat fecal matter you must gobble up fecal <laughs> matter now like you can't just do the opposite of what a guy is saying and expect to be right with any precision and and with with any accountability at all. He's going to be right about certain things. Then yeah. you can go, well, I disagree on with Trump about his policy about uh, close, you know, building a building a wall. I, I disagree right. with that. But as far as where the, the COVID emanated from, sure, that might. Be, but you dumb shits took the bait. You went all in on everything. Yep. And now you're getting sp- bitch slap because you were <laughs> wrong about everything but all you did was the opposite of trump which is going to fuck up your batting average if trump says i like pizza and you just go fuck pizza it's the worst food in the world because no, uh, yeah you pizza. say i like pizza then you're like you're a trump supporter you couldn't you can't like anything that the person that you don't like likes or agree with anything and do you remember the time i remember the time that people could actually have a discussion about politics, somebody was a Democrat, somebody was a Republican, but they shared similar views on certain things and different views on other things, and that was okay. But you can't do that anymore. You can't have one opinion that differs from the rest. Right. Well, there's nothing and then, in the middle of that Venn There's diagram. no so middle. CNN and all the fucking lefties got fucked up because Trump goes, came from China, comes from uh, the lab, that's what I believe. And then, then CNN goes... Oh, now we know it didn't come from the lab. It's like, but you don't know anything. All right. you know is what Trump said, and you're doing the opposite of what Trump right. said. And 
You are in the business, CNN, MSNBC, Fox, LA Times, New York Times. What you're in the business of is a you're in the batting average business. Nobody has a blue chip prospect come to the Yankees and expects them to hit 1,000%. Right. It's all about batting average. So we need to figure out, and there's no newspaper, and there's no USA Today, and there's no NBC. There's no anything that's a thousand percent on everything because right. things are fluid. Yeah. They move. There are things we don't know now that we're, we do know now that we didn't know then. Mm-hmm. Like, But it's an average. And if you're going to go the opposite of Trump on everything, you're going to fuck up your average New York Times, which is what you guys got baited into doing, essentially, right. which is insane. The other thing that's funny about the uh, border, um, Ben, you can find pictures of this, but it's so funny. The, the border is so fucked up that I think in Texas they took shipping containers and they just sort of mashed them end to end along the Rio Grande, right? And they put like barbed wire around it. And it, they're getting such an influx that they literally put a barrier up and no one said a word about it. it oh. You can see wow. that they took 40 foot shipping containers and went end to end with them. They put them along the Rio Grande. And if you ask the CNN or MSN, BC reporter or AOC, what are they doing with those shipping containers? They're like, hey, they're trying to build a barrier to stop the influx of. Like, you were screaming about a wall a ten wall. seconds right. ago, being exactly. racist. They're, they're building a mm-hmm. shitty wall. They're a really shitty wall. <laughs> they're building a wall that can be defeated with they, a six foot a, a, yeah. a frame <laughs> ladder. <laughs> they missed I two could, spots. I could slip through that wall. Yes, I I, I think spot. what they did is they left gaps to try to funnel people through the gap and then set up at the gap, but. Uh, you can call this shipping containers or you could call it a makeshift wall, but they're trying to slow this by building a wall. Yeah, it's all spin. It's Operation Steel Curtain, it's called, by the way. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, the name of the it's Pittsburgh Steelers name, defense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Steel Curtain. All right, so John Stewart's right. And, and the problem with the left is they're going so hard left that they're now losing – you're losing your John Stewart's, you're losing your Bill Mars, you're losing your Woody Harrelsons, you're losing normal people who yes. agree with you on abortion and legalizing marijuana right. and everything else because you've gone so kooky that you're losing regular people who are allies yes. of yours for decades. It's the problem on both sides. They're so extreme. It's, yes. there's People need to just relax and fucking yes. remember. Like the, People are insane. And the mask thing, too. Now the government is like, oh, the masks don't work. But people were saying that a long time ago. You know what I mean? And now they're like, well, you know, all right. So the masks really... Don't do that much for I, you. I, I will modify my masks don't work. Oh, by the way, I wasn't three weeks into any of this, and I dispelled <laughs> all of it. All of it. I'm so glad I'm on yeah. tape. It was all dismissed by me, and and, it, and and with attitude and prejudice. Like I was like, <laughs> "Fuck that! I'm not doing that. I'm not now. I'm not hiking with a fucking mask oh, on. God, I'm no. not doing it." Here's what I, I'll modify my masks don't work. Um, mask can't work. Now, masks don't work suggests that, oh, you can't get a properly fitting right. medical grade, whatever, in this setting. Yeah, that can work. Masks don't work when you take them off when you sit down at the table, but you walk through the right. restaurant right. with them on, and then you pull them down in right. between bites. Then masks- And your mouth is open, and you're- mm, ma- yeah. Masks can't work, but neither could a snorkel. <laughs> like, every once in a while, I fill it with water. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, uh, what would work? With with that's the provisions. Right. So you wear a helmet when you ride a motorcycle, but mm-hmm. sometimes you put it between your legs, like when you're eating funyuns. Well, then a helmet won't work. It can't work if right. you if you're going to do it. If these are the rules, it can't work. You're right. That's that's yeah. what I yeah. knew. But everyone went insane. All right, it's good for everybody. Well, somebody else that went insane, Lori Lightfoot. You mentioned her earlier. Oh, what a yeah. Hag. So she <laughs> so horrible. She has become the first Chicago mayor in. 40 years to lose the re-election. She lost on Tuesday, ending her historic run as the city's first black woman and first openly gay person to serve in this position. I uh, always like when they, they chalk up racism. Like, oh, I didn't get re-elected because of racism and homophobia. It's like, bitch, you got elected. Yes, you got Whoa. elected. You right. got elected. You did a shitty job. Yeah. And now they want to go another direction. Is, 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 can we toy with the notion of you doing a shitty job and them wanting to hire possibly another black lesbian, like who can do the job. Right. Who can actually do the job. 
I well, she did say that. So yes. uh, a New Yorker piece ran Saturday, and her quote was, "I am a black woman. Let's not forget, certain folks, frankly, don't support us in leadership roles." And then, when asked by a reporter if she'd been treated unfairly, she responded, "I'm a black woman in America, of course." Right. So yeah, well, she gets elected to be mayor of a major city. Well, it's All like right. kind of cool to do that, right? Like DJ Khaled does it. Travis Kelsey. Nobody believed in us. Nobody yeah. believes in us. Look, like, do does she like, not look at like what what kind of job she just did? Does it like is that? I I will tell you. I will tell you a very good little indicator of your city sort of jumping the shark that happened to me when I was in Chicago, and I can figure it out. I'll look at Chris. I don't know. It was about three years ago. I was doing some corporate shit there. And after the show, I was like out having steak. Oh, yeah. yeah. A steak. And they, of course, out on the sidewalk because yes. it's unsafe to go inside a building because masks <laughs> Gibson. don't work or they do work. Or, uh, and we're Gibson. sitting out there. And the entire, it's like a Friday night. And the entire time. <laughs> now, there, there are two types of motorcycle gangs historically in this country. And there's a lot of range. <laughs> yeah. Old motorcycle gangs were white dudes bearded yeah. on choppers. Leather. New motorcycle mm-hmm. gangs are black 17-year-olds on quads mm-hmm. and like dune buggies and shit. Doing wheelies. Just doing wheelies and going right down Lakefront or Lakeshore or whatever. And first of all, I couldn't hear because I was trying to have a conversation. These guys come by with open pipes, throwing revs and stuff. One guy took his quad and like hit a pedestrian. It was oh like trying God. to cross the street and stuff. It's and madness. I'm like... Now you go, all right, well this is this is a thing, but what does it represent? Right. It represents lawlessness. It's right. not it doesn't represent cops stopped writing tickets for guys that were on Elsinore two fifties <laughs> or Yamaha, you know, Y Z eighties. No no, it's a it's a general it's a general lawlessness that then people go, you know, it'd be really cool to do on a Friday night. Just drive right down the main <laughs> boulevard, yeah. popping wheelies and doing donuts and throwing reps. So that's what they were doing. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, this place is lawless. And then they were like, <laughs> well, we haven't even crunched the numbers on carjackings or murders. I was like, we don't need to see those numbers. This guy just fucking popped a wheelie in his quad and he's doing donuts. Yeah. This is telling. Would this means this is lawless. Would nobody everybody was just watching this? It was like after the whole George Floyd thing, then everyone started attacking the cops and then the cops started pulling back and mm-hmm. they're like, oh, we're not going to get involved. And yeah, I like I need videotape of me tackling this black teen <laughs> off his quad. No, no, like no no no. no. I like we'll my job. Soon. And by yeah, the way, yeah. mayor of whoever who does nothing but um, degrade us. Fuck off. Then you fucking deal. Have fun with your reelection. Yeah. When carjackings and murders are through the roof, and we're the we're the guys you don't like. Good. We'll hang back. Have fun. <laughs> right. and by the way, who's getting killed? Black people. Like that. That's who's good. It's not Klansmen who are being gunned down in Chicago. It's black people who she loves and wants to help. Yeah. Except for she doesn't help them. So good. She can fuck right off. Yeah, I mean, look, she failed to get enough votes to make the runoff. And yeah. then, oh, wow. Yeah, I and, know. Uh, by the way, it's a racist thing, but seven of the other people are black who are yeah, running also, too. Yeah, also, that's you know? the thing. She can't say that when her, her other her opponents are also black. All right. Yeah. All right. You want to watch one of her greatest oh, hits? Oh, I love her greatest okay, hits. Okay, let's watch her... Uh, her yelling about those who are violating the stay at home. Oh, you got to stay oh, at home. Or she's coming yeah. after you. Yeah. This is how it's going to be. Oh. We will shut you down. We will cite you. And if we need to, we will arrest you and we will take you to jail. Hold on. Period. She's not talking about guys who ride quads through restaurants. She's talking no. to taxpayers <laughs> who went outside without a mask or didn't get vaxxed. <laughs> okay. That's interesting. Okay. We will shut you down. We will cite you. And if we need to, we will arrest you and we will take you to jail. Period. There should be nothing unambiguous about that. Don't make us treat you like a criminal. But if you act like a criminal and you violate the law and you refuse to do what is necessary to save lives in the city in the middle of a pandemic, we will take you to jail. Period. Yeah, see, this is a problem, Jody. Sorry, but you can't have a bunch of angry bitches running everything because when you defy them, well, 
my my biggest mistake of every argument I've ever had with a woman right. is attempting to use logic, statistics, and data. That just gets them more angry, and then you you get punished harder. We do. So we can't have people think like that in positions of power because then when someone says, well, let's look at some mass data or what it does to kids to lock them in their apartments and not let them go to school or are kids even in danger, those other things, then you get fucked up. Now, to be fair, Gavin Newsom is a bitch. Like he, <laughs> he, he's 100% chick dink and that's how he rolls too. And so it's the Burbank City Council and the LA City Council and everything as well. Yeah. But she's a fucking surly bitch and she's anyone upset. that defies her, she would get angry. Mm-hmm. She also yeah. used the word unambiguous incorrectly. Yeah. Ooh. I actually, that's yeah. what I was, I was like, what is that actually? Yeah. She should have said crime. ambiguous. Yes. yes. Not There's unambiguous. nothing, uh, yes, exactly. Yeah. Ambiguous about that. I was like, and I literally was like, unambiguous. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm not an angry bitch. I'm skinny Jody Miller. Mm-hmm. Skinny there's Jody no Miller. reason for me to be oh. angry. I'm already skinny. I might be a little hungry, but I'm not angry. <laughs> yeah, oh. you're not. You're lovely, but and uh, and Jody, I'm sure you could appreciate her hair. Her haircut looks very uh, nice, and yeah. high and tight. Oof. Well, someone asked her about it right right when the stay at home order happened years ago. That's hey, my favorite. How did how are you how did you get a haircut? We're all we're all growing our yeah. hair out. What's going on? And this is what she had to say. City. I'm on national media, and I'm out in the public eye. And you know, I'm a I'm I'm a person who I take my personal hygiene very seriously. As I said, I felt like I needed to um, have a haircut. I'm not able to do that myself. I want everyone to look at the translator. If you look back, the disgust on her face when she was doing it. Oh, too, she wasn't you, happy about. Just look at. Play she, that again that, and look at her face. The translator's she, like, my hair is so she, long right like, now. She's like, I am next to this bitch. <laughs> she hadn't had her roots done in 17 months. Uh, um, okay, first things first. She's a dumb person. And the reason she's dumb <laughs> is because when you get busted for doing something, yes. you can't then explain, I like, you know, it's like, you were driving drunk. I like drinking. <laughs> I also like driving. I got to get from point A to point B. I need to be there. And I like drinking at point A. So then I have to go to point B, but I drank. Well, I drive because, because I like drinking. Like, you have to get there. What you have to you have to go. It was a Christmas party. <laughs> uh, I had a, I had a sober driver. He hooked up with a chick and left early. I didn't know where to go. My fucking phone was, was out a of bad battery. Decision. It was I a don't bad recommend decision. Recommend don't, not, that not that not yet. explain that you right. care about your hygiene. She does. When this thing came out, so it's not even a good haircut. I know when when this fucking thing dropped, I was like. You are announcing to the city that you shut down and they shut down all the, <clears throat> by the way, shutting down all the ladies, beauty parlors and salons just forced people, and I know these people, who to go to other people's houses and cut, hair cut them ha- hair in the fucking living room or the garage my hair colored. with a Couldn't group. Of course, that's all people yeah. do, you fucking fascists. <laughs> it's not like people stop getting their hair cut. And by the way, it didn't stop this bitch or Gavin Newsom from going to the French laundry. Like, it doesn't do anything. I didn't stop getting Botox. I uh, went to a woman's house and she really? stuck needles in my face and she was very close to me and I breathed in her air uh, right. and she stuck botulism in right. my neck in, and in, face. in a non-clinical setting. And, and we, it all worked out. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but she cares about her hygiene as if any woman says, I care, I know nothing of my hygiene. I care you, not you at all. You guys don't care about your hygiene. I care about it. I truly don't care about my hygiene, <laughs> yeah, but I'm the only person who is on record <laughs> as not being caring about his hygiene. All right, there we she go. Cares. She cares. All right. Cares. Well, goodbye. Oh, Blame listen, are, are we all... Okay, everyone gets mad at me. All the fucking assholes in positions of power that were wagging their finger at us to stay home or you're going to be arrested or shut this down or go back to your... Fuck y'all. Fuck you. And you should be punished. And I hope part of the reason she's being punished is because of COVID and all her draconian lockdown rules. Because fuck you guys. And you need punishment. A, because you did a horrible thing. And when you do horrible things, you get punished. That's the way our society works. So good. And by the way, let me explain. Let me say something about all these horrible, retarded politicians. Yes. You take a guy like you have uh, Eric Garcetti Mm -hmm. here, right? Look no further than uh, Antonio Villa Retardo, who used to run. (laughs) I remember him. Whose name is uh, Tony Villar. His real name, his real name, the guy ran 
um, Los Angeles for eight years, mm -hmm. I believe it was. Tony Villar is his real name. Okay. Now, he went with uh, Antonio Villaraigosa because he wanted some intersectional points. Oh. Let's mm -hmm. not not get sucked into the intersectional points. It oftentimes means the person's not qualified, can't do a good job, but they're right. getting votes not based on a record, based but based on, on their intersectional points. So Tony Villar and, and everyone around the country and out of the country who's listening to this, please try to digest this. Tony Villar uh, and, and, and Anthony you know, uh, Villaraigosa Failed the bar four times. Antonio Villaraigosa, yeah. Tony Villar. Mm -hmm. He wasn't known as Tony Le Le Tony Villar when he was in the fifth grade. Right. He he went through college as Tony Villar. Tony Villar okay. was his name. That's his name. Skinny Jody Miller. Oh, I know. What was your name in college? Jody Miller. Right. Not Skinny Jody Miller. Chris, little, your name? overweight. Loxy. All right. Me, Adam. They all have the same name, but yeah. he got a new it's name. A totally different. He name. had a new name. Failed the bar four times. He's going to run Los Angeles. Kim Kardashian has failed the bar less than he. <laughs> and by oh, the yeah. way, there's such a thing as guys who fail the bar three times, two times, four times, and then they pass on their fifth. He never passed. Oh, so he never passed? He oh, never passed. So how? Okay. But here's, here's the question. Here's my hypothetical. We'll lump Lori Lightfoot in, Eric Garcetti. These are major cities. This is Los Angeles and yeah. Chicago. The people who are mayor, who are in charge of the seventh biggest economy in the world or whatever, whatever we're talking about, these massive sprawling cities with these insane budgets and everything else. If these people were dynamic and talented people, mm -hmm. how come five years after they leave office, they're fucking shilling for herbal life and no one's ever hears from them again? Do you know what uh, I mean? What sure. Lori Lightfoot should be running Nabisco or Elon Musk should appoint her, but he won't and she can't because she's worthless. That's it. Eric Garcetti ran Los Angeles for four years, eight years. He's gone. Well, he should be starting a dynamic business and reinventing the way we do it. They never do anything because they're <laughs> fucking dullard retards who aren't good at anything. You get, you couldn't, if you said to Elon Musk, uh, Elon, no more running Chicago. Right. No, no more. He'd go, fine. I'm going to invent a yeah. helicopter winged Uber <laughs> people mover that's going to, I'm going to start space tourism. But these people move on to nothing. So how good could they have been? How, what is their intellect? How, what, what is their ability? What is their work ethic? Like how, yeah. what do how do you do? run Los Angeles for eight years and then you're never heard of ever again, except for once in a while you rattle the can and try to get money from, from people. <laughs> yeah, because where is their money coming from now? I, I, yeah, I, I, making, I, where's their income? Right. So the point is, is Tony Villar was always a dope, a lazy, undynamic dope who we let run Los Angeles for, for eight years. And now he's back to an unmotivated, lethargic dope who isn't running Los Angeles. Lori, let's all imagine what Lori Lightfoot will be up to in years to come. <laughs> Something? No, she's a fucking dope. She's working for Supercuts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that she'd be great. She's great for oh, Supercuts. She needs to fucking snack her right up. Mm. All right, I'm angry. Let's take a quick break. <laughs> we'll come back. As we celebrate 14 years of podcasting, here's another memorable moment from the Adam Carolla Show's Ace Awards Archives. Hey, uh, Ricky, 28, Pasadena. Yeah, hey, Bald and Gina. I oh, love is this our hey. Ricky from Pasadena? Yeah, what's up, man? Yeah, the DJ. Yeah, well, last time I called you, dude, you weren't too nice to me, and, um, and I did some homework, and one of the things that I think would be a big help for you is maybe you should listen to your show because sometimes you're really mean to people, especially the younger crowd like me. <laughs> well, that brings me up to my next point, Rich Whitey. I did some research on the top five DJs that you keep talking smack about, and do you know that the top DJ this year made $22 million? Ooh, yeah. Skrillex, Skrillex, yeah, Skrillex makes $15 million. What do you think about that? Yeah, you know how much Union Carbide makes every year? But they still poison the water <laughs> and kill the indigenous people. Yeah. Oh, hey, Putin's doing pretty good for yeah. himself financially. 
You checked his FICO yeah, score? I'm not saying Putin's as bad man? as Skrillex. <laughs> but, you know. These guys are worthless, out, talentless hacks who figured out a way to get money from dumb people like yourself, Ricky. Well, I'm not stupid. I went to school and I went to college, too. All right. Mm-hmm. Pasadena Junior College doesn't count. I went to Fullerton JC. How about that? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> he got you. He did get you. <laughs> now for some new memorable moments. Let's get back to the Adam Carolla Show. Skinny Jody Miller hanging Listen, in. Rich Whitey over here. Yeah. <laughs> let's but let, let's continue this Antonio Villaraigosa. Yeah. Uh, Eric Garcetti, s- soon to be Lori Lightfoot thought experiment. Every time you sure. say Lori Lightfoot, by the way, I keep thinking you're going to say Lori Laughling. Um, <laughs> so close. She Jeez. needed to do yeah. time. No, she, that, yes. yes. Throw her in there. All right. Let, I know uh, many dynamic people mm-hmm. and then there's like my parents you know what I mean <laughs> and so if you said to my family what's new what's going on what are you up to they would talk to you about scones because <laughs> they discovered a place that has scones they would never but I also know Mark Garagos and I know mm-hmm. Seth MacFarlane mm-hmm. and I know Jimmy Kimmel and if you ever say if you say to Jimmy Kimmel or Seth MacFarlane, and forget about showbiz, you know Mark Garagos, like what? What's what's up to you? What's what's new? What's right. new? They go, here's what I got. I got this. I'm doing that. I'm doing that. I'm doing this because they're smart, dynamic, motivated people who are fucking great white sharks, just just swimming mm-hmm. through the ocean of yeah. life. But the undynamic people who we went to high school with, or occasional family members. Mm-hmm. Or that employee that wasn't doing shit, so you fired them, and then you catch up with them three years later, and they're doing less shit now. Well, mathematically, they're not doing anything either because it makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. I have a 110-pound black lab named Phil. I don't need a nanny cam. I know what he's doing now. (laughs) He's fucking sprawled out somewhere farting. That's what he's doing. He's he's laid out. I could narrow it down. He might be on the sofa in the living room. He may be by the front door next to the mat. But he is doing what he does. Right. So I don't want Phil running, even though it's intersectional because he's black. I don't want him running Los Angeles. But sure. we don't we don't get that. We don't get that part. Like the, the, the reason. It's not a coincidence none of these people are up to anything. They, the only thing they were ever up to was fucking up a city, and now they're done with that, right. and they're just going to go on doing nothing. There's no... There's no but they had to do something to get to that position. Yeah, how did they, they get elected? They but... See, that's the thing. They had to have some motivation, some... Well, <laughs> Nepo baby. Uh, All right. Gil Garcetti. Yeah. Oh. Is Eric Garcetti's dad. Oh, okay. And he, I think Gil Garcetti was the DA of Los Angeles. So you get a little of that... Also, people are dumb and they're busy and they're not really paying attention, right? You know, and then they start. It, you know, you know what? It's sadly what it's like. What I think it's like. It's like I know guys that won like homecoming king. Yeah, they were captain of the football team. It's yeah. just nobody filled out the shit. They yeah. just filled it out and went, yeah. eh, vote for me. And I'm like, all right, we're like too tired and too busy yeah, to. Yeah. Pay attention. I mean, what but those people had, they were charismatic. They had, they might have peaked at high school and they did nothing afterwards, but there was a short period of time that they had a burst of ambition, drive. And then, yes, and then somewhere they got it and then they didn't think they had to do anything else after they got it. So then they do nothing for the rest of their lives. Is that sort of. I'm saying if a person is dynamic, that person is dynamic. You don't when, think they can lose? No. I, uh, from my experience, okay. like you take, well, first off, could you imagine not talking to Elon Musk for three years and then go, what, what, what's new? <laughs> yeah. Come see, come saw, like not much. Just kind of chilling, <laughs> hanging out with Margaret on a futon. Like he would tell you 200 things yes. he's done in those three years. Of course. Right. right. Or, or any, imagine Mark Cuban. Mm-hmm. Uh, not, nothing. <laughs> he's he's trying to invent a bottle to carry water that you can eat <laughs> when you're done to drop them off in Africa. I feel like that's already there, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right, because that's what he's been. He's a yes. dynamic, smart person. Like, Lori, La- Lori uh, Lightfoot. Now you got me going. <laughs> yeah. you she's not dynamic. She's not smart. So she, I, I, 
They have to have some get, ambition, though, in the no, beginning. No, they, they do. But then we they're lazier because yes. they're coasting on intersectional okay, that's, points. That's like, they're going, I'm black. I'm a lesbian. So I'll get some votes, right? Because this is Chicago, right? Or I'll change my name from Tony Villar to <laughs> Antonio Villaraigosa. And, and, and Los Angeles, half Hispanic. So all this. Now we're making them even worse at their job. But yeah. I've been telling them we got to burn calories to get your job. Mm-hmm. And then once they trip. fuck up the city bad right. enough, we go, all right. Right, well, we'll find someone else to fuck it up. <laughs> but they never go on. What? What is? Well, does this? Maybe this position doesn't well, attract people like Elon Musk or like? Do you want you would Mark Zuckerberg we had, be the mayor of Chicago? We had Rick Caruso, the guy who developed ah. all these great properties mm-hmm. here, the the clean, safe places we love to shop and be entertained. But we're so fucking dumb as Los Angelinos that we we hired another person that was just a system intersectional person to now run the city. That's we're creatures of habit. Like Long Beach did it. We we hired y'all. We hired the assistant mayor. It's a fucking dumb. People are so fucking dumb. What I I want to know. By the way, uh, Eric Garcia is not going to do anything because he's not capable of doing. Well, things. he can't. He can't. Like Biden named him ambassador for India, and he still hasn't gone. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's still getting. That's still stalled. What is? I mean, Antonio Viragosa has been gone for eight years now, and he did nothing. Find out what did he? What, what has he been doing for real? He's like he trying to make yeah. trying did to make money. Podcast? He's not passing <laughs> the bar. <laughs> By the way, I if I was running against him, I'd just be like. I don't care if this guy is uh, Eric Estrada and Juan <laughs> Valdez all rolled up into one. I don't care what he says he's going to do for the homeless community or the gay community. This fucking retard failed the bar four times. Do you want him running Los Angeles? Or do you want anybody who failed the bar four times mm-hmm. running Los Angeles? And that's all. I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm not going to tell you about uh, purifying the water in the bay or working on the homeless or school. I, I will not even talk about it. He failed the bar four times. I'm done. That's my speech. <laughs> Bill Ragosa continues to fail upwards. Last August, Newsom named him oh. the infrastructure advisor. That's kind of a nice right. That's, that's the only thing they can do is have other advisor. like-minded fuck-ups in their own party give them Band some together. some sort of non-job a gr- title. It's a great title, infrastructure advisor. His yeah. job is to raise money for that high-speed <laughs> rail authority. <laughs> right, the one from Merced to Bakersfield parties. that never worked. I hosted a. We were so dumb. Well, you know, I mean, shit. If you lived in Bakersfield, you'd be like, I need to get to Merced really fast. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, That's 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 true. That train. They're lucky over there. I hosted a charity event that Villaraigosa was at when he was, you know, still a part of the city, and he held stray animals and took a picture with me. (laughs) (laughs) Let you guys know it was his birthday as well, and we had a piece of cake. I talked shit about him endlessly and then had to do some Britney Spears thing with him. Once and I was like, oh, fuck. Wait, what is that? A, what Britney Spears thing? I don't even know. Is that at the like LA Live? Or yeah. The, yeah, around there. Yeah, there's pictures of it. I didn't know what the event was, but there's a crowd. There's Britney Spears. And then Adam. <laughs> yeah. And Via Retardo. Yeah. So uncomfortable. Because you go into your little radio studio and you talk shit nonstop. Oh, there you are. What is that haircut she was sporting? That was a terrible look. Oh, yeah. it's up. Well, oh, she it's cares up. about her hygiene. She does. She, she cares does. About no, for hygiene. sure. Absolutely. All right. I'm next story. I'm angry. I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, All right, but let's 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 mark the twine here, everyone. Let's figure out what incredibly dynamic job Lori oh, Lightfoot will be doing great. five years from now in the private sector. Private sector. Not the fucking local NAACP giving her some shit job and some title somewhere in some cubicle. I mean, what is she going to be doing? Answer, nothing. And that's how you know she shouldn't be running anything. Thank you. (laughs) Go ahead. All right. Well, uh, let's make you feel better. Dave Grohl was trying to get yesterday. uh, Yeah. So he barbecued for 24 hours to serve 500 meals at uh, L.A. homeless shelters. So yeah, so he he took naps during during the day too. Just obviously, he rolled the smoker in and everything. A massive smoker trailer, which they uh, and you know brisket, ribs, pork butts. Um, The crew also prepped food out of the kitchen at the Trebek Center. It's a skating rink turned homeless shelter that uh, the late Alex Trebek supported. Mm. But Grohl personally paid for all the expenses and barbecued outside during the rainstorm that hit California on Wednesday. 
as I said, he took naps. And uh, and spoke, like people were tweeting it like, we didn't know Dave Grohl was coming. Like he did this unannounced. He just came with a smoker. I was watching it on TMZ, and he was holding up this beautiful smoked brisket. Mm, and I it was like leftover night for me with the fucking yeah. dried chicken. And I was just looking at him and go, fuck these homeless people, man. <laughs> I want some of that brisket I so do goddamn too. I'm bad. I'm getting it tonight. I'm getting barbecue tonight. You guys, yeah. this is the second time you brought a barbecue. We we got jacked. We got we got dry brisket anal rape the last time we hit barbecue. <laughs> yeah, we well, got brisket fucked. But that is that good? That sounds. Bad. Oh, I guess it could be a good thing for some people, but no, it wasn't good no. for the taste buds. Oh, okay. We just. I was on a quest to get hash browns. Oh, God. <laughs> like, That's it's true. It's got completely brisket could, could not summon hash browns. Was almost forced by the guy who opened for me oh. in, at Baltimore to go you to got, this place. You got and, a spot. And yeah. don't oh. forget to get the brisket. Mm, yeah, fuck. We ordered a fucking order of ribs and an order of shoe leather known as brisket. <laughs> what? How, how did they get brisket to become gray? It was, oh gray it was gray and thin and like leathery. No, no. Mike August promptly devoured all the ribs. <laughs> <laughs> he felt so bad about that. And I was left with the fucking dry brisket. And I, I need a palate cleanse. Like I, I got to uh, like I, I, you know what I mean? Like yes, I've been abused and I yes. need to love again. Oh, God. There's a yeah. great brisket, uh, mm. like barbecue place. Mm. Mm. But Dave Grohl, what a saint. Oh, That's saint. great. Yeah. That's saint. amazing. I love it. <laughs> yeah. All right, so um, also there's this show on HBO that's coming out called The Idol. Have you heard of it? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. So it's maybe it's uh, well Sam Levinson who created Euphoria. Is no one. On I, by the way, you can't. You could have said to me 20 years ago, "Have you heard of it?" And I would have had a definitive answer. Oh, really? There's no such thing as "Have you heard of it?" with me anymore because. Everything's flying mm. at my face yeah. at a thousand miles. I was like, oh, that show, that actor turned on. I go, nah, I never heard of it. And then at some point I go, oh, yeah, I think I saw, <laughs> I think I passed the billboard. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, there's, right. there's so much information I can no longer with accuracy say I've never heard of something. Okay, that's fair. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, this is starring The Weeknd. Mm-mm. And Lily Rose Depp. <laughs> I'm so glad you brought The Weeknd up. Why? <laughs> because let me. Give you an example of how old and lame I am. And you don't need any more than I've you probably heard on the yeah, show before, I've, but I will I'm already I rare. will I will give you an insight into Pops Corolla. Uh-huh. I was sitting home on like last Saturday or something. I turn on the TV and every once in a while I'll just scroll down through the Movie channels, right. HBO mm-hmm. and Showtime. Like, what's on right now? Right. It's like, oh, old school's on. I was like, no, I'll watch 20 minutes of that. There's right. some Rob wedding, in that. wedding yeah. crashers is on and there's 40 minutes left. Okay, I'll watch I'll watch that. I was just scrolling and I stopped on HBO and uh-huh. it said it said SoFi, you know, uh, uh, event center, the weekend. And I was like, yeah. yeah it's like this <laughs> I was like, weekend. It is the weekend. It's the weekend. It's Saturday. Yeah, right? What are they putting on? It's the SoFi Event Center. It's like the weekend. And okay, like, I know when it is. Yeah, yes, right, I, got it. A, I got a calendar page <laughs> in my they newspaper. I spelled the weekend wrong. It's not, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that I would have never got. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> right. that, I would have got that at any point in my life. And I'm like, <laughs> they're just celebrating a Saturday? I, I, and, and is there a bunch of events going on? Or a circus? What's a carnival? What kind of weekend celebration is going on? At That's SoFi, amazing. and let me see what this is all about because it seems so generic to so not gen- name it. <laughs> also, it is the worst name. <laughs> I turned it on; it was the weekend, was the and weekend. I was like, "Oh my god, are you old?" I, the yeah. fact that he's called the weekend actually yeah. bothers me. It's always bothered me. It's not that I don't like his music. It's not that I don't think he's talented. I don't. Why is that your name? It's not the. We the, say it too much. Yes. Yeah. So it's confusing. Yes. Yeah. It's a very I, who's I on first. The weekend. It's not even weekend. It's just it's the weekend. I know. I thought it was like <laughs> some news show, on like Sunday the morning weekend. news show. The weekend well, from like, SoFi. It's, it's a terrible name. To I yourself. I agree. It fooled me. Last time he performed at SoFi, he came out on stage and like in the second song, it's like he stops the music, sold out SoFi stadium. Mm-hmm. Just like, sorry. My voice is gone, guys. I, I I can't do this anymore. For real? Bye. Yeah, yeah. I just walked off stage. 
It was the weekend was not. <laughs> it was not the weekend. No. So. Oh, that's terrible. I Did watched, they get their money back? I, made I think. It I it. think that's what this yeah. was. Maybe it was yeah. the redo. All right. So the weekend. Yeah. So the weekend. He's going to be on a show called The Idol. It's a, a like a gritty, uh, satirical look at Hollywood exploitation and mm. cultism. I've never right? heard of that yeah. in Hollywood. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what happened was the the original director. Uh, her name's Amy Simetz. Um, she she was taken off the project, and Sam Levinson from Euphoria was was put mm. in. So Rolling Stone, your favorite publication. Nothing but Adam. the truth. So they did some investigative yeah, journalism. Good. They talked to 13 cast and crew members, and there are a lot of disturbing things happening with this production, like firings, chaos, they said. Oh, I did hear scripts, about this. A wasted $75 million budget. There is a proposed scene where Lily Rose Depp carries an egg in her vagina and if she broke or drops the egg the weekend's character would refuse to rape her mm. so it's, it's so it's very gritty right i mean I, I don't even watch euphoria i saw like 15 minutes yeah. of euphoria and it i goes like euphoria too, but it is very you have to be like it's like these the are right, kids like yeah. i was when i was at h i was throwing water balloons at yeah. stuff like yeah, what yeah, am yeah. i Oh, so, euphoria? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I know. It's, it's kind of disturbing. Yeah, disturbing. Yeah, well, wait till yeah. your kids are euphoria age, because yeah. I don't even say teenage anymore or I 17. I just go, they're euphoria age. Yes. So whenever you see them oh. over there smoking crack <laughs> and rolling on Doing ecstasy and, and like and... felching and shit, oh, uh, that, that's that's the age. Yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's alarming. So the Rolling Stones piece says that it's just such an extreme production and nobody likes working there. There's a lot of creepy male behavior, financial carelessness and all this stuff, right? So mm. it's a big hit piece on this show. And then today, TMZ had their own source and they were like, the weekend and everyone says that it's fun and they love working with this guy. So they don't mm. understand Rolling Stones' piece on it. Um, but yes, according to TMZ, the weekend felt that Sam Levinson came aboard to quote write the ship, and the majority of the cast and crew like what he's doing, despite it's a little edgy um, and some of the stuff they've shot is pretty edgy. But and HBO also say that they are enjoying working with Sam. So it's weird that Rolling Stone put this piece out and then TMZ's well, no like, one, yeah, no one. Well, that's weird. That is weird that TMZ didn't. But it's not surprising that HBO and everybody else would say, no, we're having a great time. Where's that director? Uh, the woman. Amy. Amy. Where's Amy? Somebody needs to talk to Amy. She let a, yeah. an egg fall out of her snatch <laughs> and they fired her. They're like, and then they raped her. Yeah. <laughs> no, but they're not that weird. No, but, that's right. the scene. He won't rape her if she drops the egg. No, right. I, I know. But it was inspired. <laughs> oh, by her. Okay. By her dropping that, of the she, egg. They'd be like, she put that the down. Egg. She dropped the egg. Yeah. So, <laughs> like, so according to the 13 cast and crew, they felt that Amy was set up to fail. She, she was given half finished scripts, a tight filming schedule, and euphoria level expectations, like fit with music oh, videos, expensive right. mansions, nightclubs, stadiums, stuff like that. So they just couldn't cover all that, all those big expectations. But I heard Sorry, that. Amy. Um, oh, what's her name? Single name Euphoria. Zend uh, Zendaya. 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 She's, she's gonna, beautiful. She's gonna million. Oh, yeah. Million episode. She, she's too skinny. Everybody says skinny. that, but I don't Listen, know. Skinny Jody Miller. Skinny Jody wants to be. <laughs> Obviously, you're Zendaya's fighting for yeah. the meme I want to be. She's gorgeous. Yeah. I think. I'm with Jody. I, no, no. Yeah. Look, I got a feeling. <laughs> I've not met her in real life. But uh, in terms of being on camera, being in that dress, right. red carpet, being insanely skinny, mm -hmm. and. Having a perfect skin tone, oh, like she's, she's the tone, she's, she's caramel colored, perfect. perfect. It's a perfect tone. All you have, you have beautiful eyes, mm -hmm. and you're skinny as shit, and you're the perfect tone, and you're like 22. Yeah, you have to be hot. Have to be. But I'm saying, yeah. her naked in the bedroom is is a little too long and a little too skinny I'll with take with it. an A cup. You know what I mean? Well, I understand I think, that. I think but a lot I of would... guys would like a little curve and a little bosom. You know, I'd, pu I'd put up with it, though. Yeah, you I think put a lot up. of guys would Well, you just want to tell your friends. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Stunning. Yeah. yeah. All right. But a million an episode. <laughs> well, was it everybody on Friends yeah, making a million friend, an episode? Yeah, that's, that's the, the Friends. friends. That's the yeah. last season of Friends deal. I no, I, I get it, but that's... But also, they don't do know. as many episodes as another television show. Would they do eight also, a season the, or 13? Friends probably had... 27 million viewers every right. whatever. But and they do what, eight episodes of this? 13 episodes per season? She doesn't do that many episodes. 
No, she to only like, has like with seven inflation. million dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. For that's not right, doing anything. Right. No, I've been just saying she's getting a million bucks. Yeah, she's she's crushing it. But I get why they want to do this. Although I don't. I mean, I have kids, and I I don't know. I don't know how much. Is this a bad disturbing I mean, whatever shit they they should watch? It's you know? a, it is very dis- things just get more and more disturbing on television as like, they do in life, and it's just kind of like it's, is euphoria for us or is it for like your kids? It like, definitely should not be for kids at yeah. all because it there are scenes in that that I think kids would be like that looks kind of cool. No matter how bad it gets, I guarantee you there are children that watch that. Teenagers. I'm like, still having trouble wrapping my mind around the whole egg snatch drop. I'm gonna rape demonstrate thing. in a minute. Could you? Yeah. Actually, I've had an egg in here the whole time. <laughs> ostrich or you quail? <laughs> she could do an ostrich. She could do an ostrich egg. Oh, I'm not kidding. Wow. Oh, she's told me oh. many times so she'll do ostrich. God. She'll ostrich. do ostrich through quail. I mean, quails... I... It's, quails are so hard to and find. And occasionally those, <laughs> occasionally those Reese's eggs, but she will fuck them I up. Will fuck them. That I'm actually sure. never comes out. That never comes <laughs> out. <laughs> right up, it actually yeah. jumps right in my lost. mouth. She'll belch and it'll smell like peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> do the ostrich egg for do Chris. The, do the trick. <laughs> okay. Uh, now we will save it for off the air. <laughs> All right. Well, that's a, a positive <laughs> sure. note to go out on. Uh, yeah, Vegas coming up. Come say hi, March 9th, do Jimmy's show there. Naples, Florida off the hook, March 24th, 25th. And then everywhere, Fresno, the Turlock, Take Fresno. Take the bullet train up there. Kansas City. Oh, this should be done by then. I mean, hell, that's all the way in April. All right. In Oklahoma City and Monterey. Just go to mcroll.com for all that. Rob Cordry, you can check out. The Donor Party as well. And, of course, Skinny Jody Miller, yeah. everybody. Check her dates out at jodymillercomedy.com. And until next time, it's Adam Kroll for Rob and Jody and Max Batta saying mahalo. <laughs> <laughs>